friends, fans, and fine folk, grab your drinks and snacks, and come on down around the campfire for this short rest. With me, and my friend Rockham! Hello, Rockham Sockham Robot! How's, yeah, how's it going? I'm good, how are you, Rob? I'm very well, thank you. How's everybody going? Let me check my activity feed. Let's see, a couple of follows. Thank you very much for all the follows. Uh, Mandaman, Mandamandi, thank you very much for the uh, the tier one support for 11 months. Centauri, thank you for the 785 bits. What's the... Is this better? That is much better, yes. Less ah, I, I was, I was picking clear. up the other microphone. That is a there clearer mic. I'm glad we picked up on that. Um, uh, seven, uh, Centauri keeps giving me 785 bits, and apparently there's some significance there that I don't understand. I don't 780. know what 785... I don't know what this. Oh yeah, that I be. I've been asked that question. You know, you know. So, Rob, uh, one of the great things about your community is that they're super welcoming. Your Discord is hyperactive, by the way. Anytime I come in, I'm like, oh, there's 842 messages. Why? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 So, I, I, okay. I stopped being able to catch up, keep up with the Discord a long time ago. And so I peeked in uh, earlier this week. I may or may not have it. I said, hey, if you, there are questions you want me to ask Rob and catch him off guard. And somebody said, ask him about 785. <laughs> it came up. I was like, I don't know what that means, but I was going to ask you, what is 785? I don't know. It's a number. It's a number. It's a, it's a, it's a product of two primes, five and 157. I don't know what, why else it would, is important. I, I don't know. I think they're just trolling me. I don't think it's important. Um, we've got a couple of questions coming in already. Thank you very much, everybody. If you uh, if you want to ask a question of me or Rackham or both or neither, um, you can uh, you can you can do so with your um, channel points. Uh, there's a fifty point channel point thing uh, where you can where you can ask the question. Put the fifty points with the channel point redemption, and then you and then you get the question, and you put the question into the thing, and then you put the question, and then and then we get the question in our eyeballs, and then we can process it with the brain, and then put put it into the mouth words, and then answer the question. That's how it works. That's the process. I will not speak. I will just interpretive dance everything that you say. <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> just to prove me wrong. Um, so I like to I like to start by 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 setting up a short rest. What we're, we're, if we're having a short rest, we need to know what are we eating, what are we drinking, where are we resting, what's what mission are we on, why why do we need a short rest in the first place? That's a good question. Uh, what I'm eating? Uh, I mean, let's let's jump into it. Rest we should we should have this we should have the set this the setting first. Otherwise, we don't know oh, what we're eating, right? Well, what what's the I mean, setting of this short it is. rest? Where are we? Okay. Uh, a setting that allows me to have shawarma. Hang on. Uh, where would that be? Uh, you know what? Let's pick a, a biome. How about the the place I feel most comfortable? Um, the city. No. Uh, <laughs> where should we be? Could be the city. Uh, could be. Could be an urban urban short rest. Let's do. Um, oh, there's a place I invented in one of my games that I like to use because it's the dumbest dumbest thing I could think of. It's an antler with many many. Um, you know, it's big, branches, uh, big yeah. branches and stuff, uh, and the branches are made of stars, and I call him the Stars Buck. Um, so <laughs> we can hang out in the store that he runs, the Stars Buck. Uh, he's a very cool dude. Did you I come, up, did you come up with the name first or the, the idea first? The, 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 the name first. Then yeah. I, like, I, got it. I have a logo for him. <laughs> Um, so, uh, stars the stars buck is, uh, we should definitely be having our short rest in the stars buck. <laughs> We're having a short rest in the stars buck. So he yeah. runs, so the stars buck runs a, a cafe of sorts, does he? He does. He's, uh, it's more like geared to dryads and tree ants and stuff. And he sounds for some reason, like a 1940s gangster, uh, <laughs> out of Chicago. Uh, he's got like, he's been smoking a long time and Hey, welcome to the stars, Buck. what can I get you? And he kind of sounds like that. Um, he's a cool dude, but he'll serve you anything you like. Awesome. So, uh, we are having a short rest in the stars, Buck. I think we're both too loud now. I'm going to drop us down because we're going up into the red a little, I'm going to mm. drop that down. There we go. So we're in the stars buck, um, and we are, uh, and we're we're having a short rest from what? What mission were we on that needs a short rest? Um, you know, why don't you tell me? All right, I will say that uh, I like the idea of an urban environment. We, we, so we're like, we are on some kind of an urban mission. We have been, I think, we've been tasked with an uh, a, I think we've been tasked with a fetch quest. Um, oh, how about how about we flip it? How about where it's an urban setting? How difficult would it be 
in an urban setting to serve summons papers for a legal case. If you're trying to track somebody down that's got like misty step, how do you ever deliver them the papers that they have to show up to court? Maybe and, that's hard to ask. And they and they they the person we're tracking uh, like bounty hunter style is like a um uh, an alter self specialist or something. They've got like alter yeah. self at will, and so they keep changing their appearance and such. Uh, and they're wearing bloody shift weave clothing as well. So they, it's yeah. hard to know who they are. So we're we've, we're we're using like a locate locate creature device to try and track them down. Uh, but they but they uh, and we're having to do the same sort of tactics where we're having to disguise ourselves because otherwise we'll, they'll see us coming and they'll be like we know who you are. And every time we get exactly. up to them, and we're like, are you? Are you? We've got pizza here for <laughs> for yeah. Jeremy Blogs. And they're like, nah, not Jeremy, me. Jeremy, dude, everybody hates Jeremy. <laughs> Dude's yeah. The worst. All right. So we're looking for we're looking for Jeremy Bloggs, uh, who is uh, probably an alias, but uh, we need to track him down for some reason. Our quest giver wants him in court. Uh, and, and you we're... know why? Because he's broken seven hundred and eighty-five laws. He solved it. That's the reason. <laughs> That's the, the reason. Keeps showing up. It is. And they so knew. we uh, we have we've we've decided. To, uh, damn, he keeps getting away from us. I'm 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 too I'm too tired. I need to I need to just take us take a second to have a breather. Let's go to the nearest stars buck. Uh, and yeah. we and we get in, and then we we are having a short rest. So no campfire. Um, unless they um, want a campfire in the middle of the stars buck. Uh, what are we, what are we eating and drinking on this shot rest? I mean, it's overpriced and it's burnt, obviously. Obviously. Uh, but he, here's the, um, here's the deal though. Uh, I don't know how you feel about this. First, I'm going to send you, I need to send you the image of the stars buck, uh, because it's, it's glorious. Um, but all right, this is a spicy take number one. <laughs> is it is it this is number one one of, of many one of Here's many here we go feel, feel free to share it. okay if we know through and i think i've asked you this question before if druids can speak to animals right and we know that animals have can talk to us like i'm really hungry today said the cow like all right cow what do you want <laughs> uh and you can even animate grass for a period of time right you give it partial consciousness mm -hmm. with yeah. speak with yeah. plants yeah. Yeah. yeah so we know these things are semi-sentient at the very least to some manner of intelligence What's the difference between us eating, let's say, cow or rabbit in the D&D universe and a dwarf eating human flesh? Well. Jesus. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> start, starting with that. Yeah, let's, okay. let's start off with a banger, dude. Let's go with this. What would be the difference? You know, um, I think the way that I always keep in mind when I'm when I'm voicing animals for to speak with animals is their intelligence of like two or three like mm -hmm. i i make sure to be speaking as if i'm almost brain dead like i'm i you, you know very little information as a as an animal they can help out with the immediate present they don't really yeah. retain memories and things so much and they don't like they don't you can't ask them about someone they saw a week ago because they certainly won't remember. You've literally described three people I know in real life. Though, <laughs> <understand>. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I, so I keep that in mind. I keep the I keep the low intelligence in mind. So it's not like they are equally as sentient. Sure. I think sure, I just, sentience I... is a sliding scale. So I mm -hmm. I I think I mean I think in the real world you'd have people, uh, plenty of people, vegans and such, arguing like the same thing of like there is no difference mm -hmm. in uh, eating human and, and animal. I posed this sort of ethical problem to one of my players once, um, who is vegan, but his character isn't, um, mm -hmm. and he went to a uh, he went to a a werewolf village, um, well a, a weir village. They're they're all different animals. But sure. they were eating. Uh, they were eating humans. They were they were capturing and killing people and stuff. And uh, and he, so he was sort of arguing ethically with them that like they shouldn't be eating humans and maybe they should be eating animals instead and stuff. Um, and then the, I, I I as the NPCs was like, but what's the difference? Like why would yeah. why, why would it matter whether we're eating humans or animals? And he and he was like. And he had to stop because his head was like exploding. Yeah, He's yeah, like, "Oh, yeah. I'm having like a cognitive thing here where I'm ag I'm agreeing with the NPC in the re in, in the real world. I agree. There is no difference seeing it in pig and an animal, like uh, a pig and a human, and whatever." He's like, "But but my character does think there's a and so he was like, uh, "My character's going to decide in this moment to go vegetarian because <laughs> because they've made such a good argument." And so he was like, I, I, "I can't deal with this cognitive uh, change anymore." So he says, "Yeah, I'm." I, I, um, uh, tell you what, if you can, if you stop eating people, I'll I'll go vegetarian and blah blah blah. So you nice. made this so like deal with say, these people. So does the Starbucks serve 
uh, what would we consider, you know, oddball meats? I don't know. Do dryads and treants care? Uh, mm. So I don't know what he serves. Yeah, so so I think there is there has to be a difference. We talked a lot recently on my world building stream about um, about resurrection and reincarnation and what has a soul mm. and what doesn't. And I remember, uh, yeah. I and, I, and I and I was deciding that uh, I was deciding that the animals do have souls just as much as everything else, and they also go to the afterlife and whatnot. But my plants don't, and I think, I think it's an intelligence score at all makes it mm. a sentient thing. But wait, don't correct me if I'm wrong, and I'm often very wrong. You just ask my wife; I'm wrong all the time. Um, Tree ants and aren't... such would have souls. Yeah, yeah. they would be and plant people. They... they would be oh, living. So they would friend. be living plants. Um, okay. Well, sentient plants. I think I think regular like trees and flowers and stuff would not have intelligence scores and the mm. the the concept of speak with plants the the spells that allow you to speak with them imbues them temporarily with enough intelligence Sentience. to because yeah. because I think this this uh, spell speak with plants is not actually giving them intelligence it's giving you the ability to understand plant body language as it were and like it's 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 in, you're interpreting it in the language center of your brain through the magic as mm. words so that you can understand it but it's not actually the plant speaking it's the cool. it's it's the plant doing its plant thing just living its plant life so you uh, can and read you're magically levels. being able to interpret what it's sure. saying so um, like if it's emitting pheromones or plant yeah. I don't know that they do but like fer uh, pollen you like oh that means that it's angry or this is yeah. a symbol for you're reading you're anything. being able to read the signals that it's sending um but it's not having it it doesn't have intelligence it doesn't have words i think that's how i think of it um Fair and enough. yes and yeah i do think that there would be people in the world dryads and stuff that do argue that you shouldn't eat animals and you shouldn't eat plants and you should uh, learn to learn to uh photosynthesize like everything else and that'd be actually that'd be a pretty interesting idea for like a main big bad evil guy a yeah. dryad a dryad who's trying to eliminate all life that depends on other life yeah. to live like because they they believe all, it's all they, they believe yeah. all food animal all all um all animals in a food chain are evil all creatures yeah. in a food chain are evil because they're eating other other creatures and they should all be essentially elementals and only elementals should live because they're the purest form of life and they can only, they can survive on pure light and it's things. almost like um, an interesting idea the, for a bad guy the ancient smith idea out of the matrix right who likens humans to like being a virus virus to propagate, right? yeah yeah it's like almost that vibe there cool. yeah that'd be an interesting so, uh, idea for a bad guy actually like somebody is an elemental or a dryad or something that says you should only live on uh, create food and water is a spell that would just create food and water that and good know. berries yeah and good berries without um, and, and that should be the only form of food for everybody like an extreme form of uh, vegan or something that'd be kind of mm. cool I look forward to you putting it uh, after Lucy Freak that'd be kind of cool <laughs> yeah N new yeah. bad guy new bad guys um so that's what we're eating at the Starbuck. He's got he's got magically created food and water so that we don't have to worry about it. the <laughs> we got we got ethically there. sourced food. <laughs> ethically sourced food. Uh only from the finest deities too, not just like your Asmodeuses, but you know, your boards <laughs> yeah, and you've... fillers and stuff. So what it, so if it, if it's a um uh if it's a menu that um allows for anything, the creation of any food and water. I don't know if you've got rules about how you rule uh, the creation of food and water whether it's just like down to the person casting it or what or whether there's limitations on it um because so, obviously it's not going to be as grand as hero's feast because it's a different spell entirely so that's funny that you ask so yeah you know i'm 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 sure you've read a book or two in your life maybe uh but when i was younger i fell in love with reading through fantasy i'm going to answer your question i promise i'll get there um i promise i just we got i'm time. old and so i have to tell you stories and then we eventually <laughs> get there this is how it is get there. when i was a young man and i could get up without making uh, grunting noises um, i'm already at that was a, stage I've yeah been at that stage a for series three of books i was like i don't know a young lad uh not that young a teenager and somebody introduced me to like the belgariad series i'm not sure if you're familiar with them it's like uh, yeah it's people from David bulgaria Eddings. i believe that's it that's it they're all bulgarians and uh it's actually written in but i have no idea what it says but it was interesting and the art was great so david <laughs> eddings wrote this series with his wife uh david and lee eddings or lee eddings i don't know how you pronounce her name uh but in it the way that they described magic uh the series is generally 
it didn't age very well. It's it's really meant for young adults. Uh, but there are segments where, when they make magic, they borrow against the world immediately around them. So to make enough heat to cast a fireball, for example, for them the concept is you borrow a little bit of heat right, from right, everything right. around you until you generate enough heat locally to cast fireball. Right. And so that stuck with me over the years, and I've always liked that idea. I've always imagined that you know the weave is just like a manifestation of living things nearby or uh, visible right, or yeah. and invisible that you borrow against. So in that very sense, whatever magic you're casting will emulate what's directly available around you. So I would imagine That's if you're cool. in a cityscape or you're trying to make create food and water, it will probably borrow against the elements that are nearby. So in a city, would that be... I don't know, a rat burger? I'm not sure. Like Interesting. It would be, that's a, that's a um, cool way of thinking of it. I, I have a similar thing where there is still a conservation of energy in my world, um, maybe because I'm a physics nerd. But like mm -hmm. I, it, people are able to cast fire fire magic because there are other people in the world who are casting ice magic, and so it's sure. and so the weave is a, a an interconnected internet, I suppose, of just different types of energy, and so nice. somebody casting cone of cold on one part of the planet is sucking thermal energy from people so so fast and so rapidly that it's causing them cold damage <sighs> but it's cu it's keeping that thermal energy in the weave uh, mm -hmm. so that somebody else in the on the, another part of the planet who is at the at the same moment casting fireball or wall of fire or something is using that mm -hmm. thermal energy and putting it all into one place <sighs> and same with like okay. healing magic and necrotic magic and stuff it's so is that why so following that logic, I love that logic. Is that why Wish sometimes fails so dramatically? Because you're borrowing against energy that isn't there. That isn't there, yeah, yeah. And if nice. you and the and the stronger you're asking Wish, that the more you're asking Wish to do with like bending reality and re rewriting mm -hmm. reality and stuff, the more it's asking for like energy that just isn't there. It's like trying to convert thermal energy from a fireball. That's like, oh god. It's, uh, and it's why, and it's why in my, I don't want to go too much into it because it's spoilers for a game that, uh, one of my home games, but it's one of the reasons that the Age of Dragons ended, um, is Ooh. because there was a lot of imbalance in the types of energy that was being used, um, uh, magically, nice. like the fire, fire was all, uh, pretty much everywhere, <laughs> and and there was not a lot of cold damage being done, and so like the, the weave kind of started to muck up. Nice. I like that the initial question was like, "What are we eating?" And <laughs> we haven't finished. About, like... We haven't finished setting up the, the short rest yeah. yet. <laughs> so yeah, I'm probably the longest winded uh, uh, person you've got here. We we talked time. we talked for a long time on uh, Quincy's Tavern as well, like before actually getting to my setup. Um, <laughs> so we so we're we're in we're in we're in Buck, uh, Stars Buck and we're in uh, we're, we're eating some conjured food and drink. Um, yes. What have you What have you ordered from the menu? Uh, I've, uh, does, does the book does in... does the book just like run the place or do, is he like the oh, chef? Yeah. Oh yeah, he uh, he runs the place. Everything. Um, he He's presents everything. food in a number of different ways. Like he can serve it through his antlers. He can serve it by uh, like a mama bird would regurgitate. You know, it doesn't oh, always I, take I the, think I'm, the I think greatest I'll take way. It in, a, in a cup, please. Yeah. Uh, uh, so you know, it depends on on how it's ordered and how he feels about you, uh, and he'll give it to you in a way that you know he wants to or not. Uh, I guess I'm getting, you know, for a cityscape, and I want to order something. Does coffee exist in your D and D world? Yep. Yep, okay. yep. Yep. So I'll take a potion of staying up, please. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I've written rules for coffee, by the way, because I think oh, it's yeah? fun. Uh, <laughs> coffee in my like in my how much is... you've taken and like con saves yeah. and stuff against getting jittery. Yeah. yeah really and what needing it is, to is... shoot off to the outhouse. So the first like uh, shot of coffee of espresso that you take reduces your exhaustion point by one. It doesn't get rid of it. For the next hour, you don't suffer the effects of exhaustion, but after that hour, it comes back and you comes make a con save, and you can gain another exhaustion point. Because right, coffee in yeah, real yeah. life doesn't get rid of your exhaustion, it just masks it for a little M bit. Masks you, masks how tired you're feeling, but you're actually yeah. still getting tired. Yeah, mm, and so, uh, what so about, I'll get a, yeah. What, what about Sorry, um, uh, caffeine resistance or whatever? Like, Can people develop? Uh, more and more, because isn't it isn't it true that in real life people need more coffee after a while? I don't know. I don't drink coffee. I inject it directly in my veins. Like at this <laughs> point, I just just <laughs> we'll just have an IV just, drip. That's it. It's, it's that's connected it. to like a. It's, con it's connected to like a, uh, a, a one of those um, what are the elaborate machines called the, uh, the dialysis machines. No, there's re there's really there's, a, there's really a uh, elaborate machines where like a, a ball will roll down a thing and knock into another thing, which turn, turns a dial, which then turns a fan on, which 
one of those what are they called rube goldberg machines Oh, nice. Yeah, like, yeah, a, yeah. like a Rube Goldberg machine. You've got one of those okay. set up for your, uh, connected to your morning alarm, and it'll just like move things around until eventually it just stabs an IV needle right into you. And, and um, it feels so good. Um, it's got coffee directly in it. No, I don't it's have got like espresso it, drips. Ex- it's at this point, yeah. Uh, no, I don't have rules for like gaining coffee resistance, but you know the word coffee resistance tickles me in the right way that I should develop. <laughs> because uh, it sounds makes it sound like a damage. <laughs> it does, like, I have and you can put it under I'm the stat block coffee, of your monster. <laughs> and it's the worst immunity to have to be immune to coffee. Imagine, oh my god. <laughs> I I, I don't think I'm immune to it, but I don't have a great. Uh, I have pretty good tolerance for caffeine. Like I don't I don't feel mm. the jittery effects of caffeine when I do drink it. Do, do you drink, drink a lot of coffee? No, I don't drink coffee at all. Um, but I, uh, I, I, I don't drink like when I drink tea every so often, like different types of tea, and when I drink caffeinated drinks. Um, what I did try and do a, an all nighter once when I was a kid, and um, and mm. took caffeine pills for that, uh, and they didn't seem to do shit. So like, I've not, I've not, I've never noticed that I have a strong reaction to caffeine. Can I, can I offend, can I just do the first offensive thing that I'm going to probably do with many on your stream? Uh, I'm going to offend all of your UK watchers. I don't like tea. Uh, I'm kind of with Ted Lasso. I think tea is like pigeon water. I'm not, I'm not a fan. <laughs> pigeon water. <laughs> I'm not, I, I'm, I I'm not a big believer of tea. <laughs> I don't, I don't drink coffee. I don't drink tea. I don't really do, uh, I don't really do hot drinks. Uh, if I do have to have a hot drink, it'll be hot chocolate. Nice. Yeah, I don't That's drink them. Uh, it's why it's why it's one of the reasons they kicked me out of the UK. I don't watch football and I don't drink tea, um, and so they were like, "Get out of here! Go to the colonies, nice. <laughs> and go to the one that's furthest possible." <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, so that's what we're drinking. That's what we're eating. I don't even know if we came up with what we're drinking. <laughs> we are drinking coffee. I'm, just, I, I'm drinking. I'm, 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 I'm yeah. drinking some sort of um, uh, some. Uh, melted down uh, elemental of sorts. I'm I'm drinking like nice. a I'm drinking melted ice elemental, um, and uh, <laughs> I, just, I was just, remi- just thinking of like iced. I, I was trying to think of like Starbucks drinks. I don't because I don't drink coffee. I don't know. Oh about yeah, just it. make something up and add Eno at the end of it. I'm having ice elemental. <laughs> ice elementino. <laughs> ice elementino. I would have that. Dude. I, would, I, would, uh, that I want the, sound pretty good. I want the nitro boost. Ice elementino, please. Uh, no foam, extra whip, double, uh, double espresso. Nice. <laughs> and then we're uh, and cup. then we're eating uh, cabinet food, which is just stupidly priced. Um, yeah. uh, and and we've yeah. paid through the nose several platinum for it. So we've set up our short rest finally. Um, nice. <laughs> the first... Wait, wait, but do you want to do you want to sit closer? I can't sit with my back. To the yeah, we're, yeah, we're going to sit. We're, we're, we're meant to we be we're meant to be keeping an eye out for our uh, our Corey, aren't we? And just in case he comes in, uh, so we'll go we'll go sit uh, just to blend in. I've brought um, some parchment and some quills, and we're going to pretend like we're writing a book. Uh, are doing nice. some work, um, and we're just going to sit at the I'll table. T- I'll bring out my uh, vintage typewriter, take off my shoes, and just really, really <laughs> embrace that, like, uh, uh, yeah, that hobo vibe. That's good. <laughs> Let's do that. Nice. Uh, I'd like to start with a question about the name, uh, uh, GM Workshop. How did you how did you come up with it, and where did uh, what, what iterations did you go through before deciding on GM Workshop? That's a great question that has a very simple answer. So initially, I had uh, my my name like twitch.tv slash Rackham was my my channel. Um, so I have I've, I'll mention this probably at some point. I've got two kids. Uh, they're pretty good. I like them. I'll keep them. Um, and when my son, who's older, uh, very old now, he's nine years old. I, 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 anyway, uh, when when he was first born, I, my I know my wife took some mat leave and then I took uh, parental leave. And because she was at work and she wanted to keep up, I was like, hey, I have this great idea. Twitch at the time had this functionality of creating private streams, uh, which was has disappeared since. So I would use private streams, send her the link with a password. She could connect, and I would stream me at home with the kid on Twitch. Right. And it was like a sort of a way nobody else could connect because it was password protected. And I did that for like a few months, and then I abandoned my Twitch account. And then I started streaming during the pandemic on that account. But lo and behold, they shadow banned my account because if you don't stream for over like two years on an account, they don't display uh, your account anymore for anyone to find. Okay. So I was like, oh, poop. So I still have my main account, and then I created a second account that I called The Rackham because I was very clever. <laughs> and then I was like, uh, that's not really indicative of what I'm doing. I'm doing D&D stuff. So I was like, oh. You know what would be cool? Something about how I like GMing. And uh, so I thought of a few things. I was like, I wonder if GM Workshop is available. 
And it was. I was like, oh, okay, perfect. I didn't think further than that. And I was like, <laughs> just like, bang, that'll do it, bang. Bingo, done, bango. Got it. Oh man, to have that to have that level of confidence when naming things, I just I I had to I had to go with Robert Hartley GM because otherwise I would spend years trying to decide on what I should call my brand and what what sh what should I what should my thing be. I was like, I'll just put it as my name, because uh, yeah. so, because I cannot I c I couldn't do what it, and just be like GM Workshop that'll do. Yeah, that's it. And uh, and lo and behold, hey, I see Sensei Suplex raid. Hi Sensei. Um, Sup Sensei the... Suplex, thank you for the follow and the raid. <laughs> He's going to grab us and just suplex us. German suplex <laughs> style style. Uh, Street Fighter 2, greatest game of all time. Anyway, and um, and yeah, and so what happened with that too is that the prefix, you know how Twitch does prefixes. Mm. And yours is like, I don't I don't exactly remember what yours is. Um, but you have great emotes. But mine is just GM work, GM work whatever. So there's no number. And I was like, oh, that's great. Double bonus. That's, that's handy. Yeah. So it mine's, uh, mine's Robert 147 or something. It's got, definitely got a number after it. It should have been Rob 785, and then we would finally know. <laughs> finally know why. What is it? They're just uh, trying. Yeah, th that's it. So, in terms of, of name, I thought, hey, GM Workshop sounds cool. Uh, at first, I was like, after I named it, I was like, wait, is that too close to Games Workshop? <laughs> it, it, is, it is close to, but. Yeah. And I was like, am I going to get in trouble? Because like, I, I genuinely didn't think, I was thinking Game Master, right? Obviously. Yeah. Uh, and I was like, ooh, are they going to get mad? But like, who cares? They're not going to watch a guy with like 50 viewers. I don't, <laughs> think, I don't think they're going to come after that, but maybe. A, that, but that's, ever... that's a lot of my a lot of my thinking behind whether, like, it often comes down to, are they going to bother? <laughs> like, is it, yeah, yeah. I, might, I might be breaking some rules here, but is anybody going to care? Exactly. And so, so far, so good. Uh, you know, Warhammer 40k sucks. Come at me, GM Games Workshop. <laughs> it doesn't suck. It's fine. I'm just antagonizing all of England. Um... <laughs> so, so yeah, GM, yeah. GM Workshop seems to be working for you, and it's a, a cool logo too. Where'd the where'd the lo logo come from? Uh, so I, the logo came from uh, a buddy of mine at work uh, is a UI UX designer, and I was like, hey, I need a thing with like a dragon. He's like, cool, I got you. He cooked up, found a few um, vectors that were out there, edited them, changed them a little bit. He's like, and in literally 10 minutes, like, what do you think about this? I'm like, yeah, okay. That'll do it. <laughs> That'll do it. So it just kind of, again, it was serendipitous. It was like, that's a cool logo. That's a cool font. I like it. Let's take it. Let's run with it. And, you know, I've not done any merch with it. I've done nothing with it, though. I've had a few viewers ask, hey, when are you releasing, like, a hat or a cup or a mug or something? Mm -hmm. Like, I'm like, I'm not because it's just... I don't know, really expensive. I don't want you to spend forty five dollars on like, uh, you know, like, hey, you get the thong with like my logo on it. That's twenty five <laughs> bucks. Dude. Why, why would you want that? You know. So, but it's a cool logo. But I like yours too. Like your logo is actually uh, this mad, you know, the R H, obviously. Yeah, just the one they use. Just a this super, one. super easy, super easy one. Um, I uh, uh, I got a friend of mine, Spidey NZ, to to do it, and he he just whipped it up very quickly and was like, there you go dice with rh in it and it was kind of like a placeholder for a while um just like a, yeah that'll do until i kind of think about what to do with my logo and then i just really liked it as i'll just fancy, stick with that fancy's telling you you have a logo you have a cursor on you and she's the embodiment oh, yeah. of twitch so you don't you don't want to make fancy angry oh no oh no he's gone blind no get it <laughs> Um, thank you, Fancy. Uh, what was, what was, so, so, uh, on the topic of names, though, uh, let's talk mm -hmm. about Rackham. Where, where's Rackham from? So, Rackham, Rackham, whatever you want to call it. How do you, how do you uh, pronounce it? I pronounce it Rackham. Rackham. That doesn't mean Rackham, it's right. Rackham, like it. Uh, I mean, so it's your name, so it's, uh, it, it does. You're the definitive, <laughs> you're the, uh, now I've put the cursor on you, apparently. There you go. Oh, no. Oh, just get, get. <laughs> Get the hell out of here. I ain't There's got time for this. There's a on everybody. All right, I'll move it right over into the other side of the screen. I'm really hungry. Oh, it, it, it went away. Um, so the name... So Rackham, believe it or not, is not my actual real-life name. It's a moniker <gasps> that I've used for a really long time. Um, and uh, it, oh, it's story time with Old Man Rackham again. Um, <laughs> old Man Rackham. When I was a child and before the internet was invented, you see, we used to sit around and get bad information and carry it for 20 years of our lives uh true. which is true uh there was i don't know if you're familiar with like zork 
Yep. Text-based adventure games? Okay, I'm, I'm saying words that mean nothing to you. Uh, they used to be... Are you familiar? Do you remember ya early day Yahoo chat room? Yeah. Does that mean anything to you? Okay, cool. Well, you would talk like Super Space Cowboy yep. XXX. And be like, oh, I bet that guy's super cool. <laughs> um, <laughs> what happened to you, Super Cowboy 2000 XXX? I, I missed you. Um, I wonder what he's doing you're... these days. I totally believe you're an 18-year-old girl from Argentina. Anyway, <laughs> and so um, we... <laughs> Basically, there used to be this thing called MUDs, multi-user dungeons. And uh, these were like sort of chat rooms that you could role-play in, or like they were essentially role-playing games, uh, mm -hmm. text-based role-playing games, where you could create a character and you could do stuff, and they still exist to this day. They're great. And I wanted a name. I wanted Arkham was my initial go-to. And I was like, oh, and I used Arkham for a bit until the moderator in the game was like, Arkham's a prison Batman. I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about. It's <laughs> like, you got to change your name. I was like, I don't know what that is. He's like, change your name. I was like, I'll just take this letter and put it at the front. Because in, Ar <laughs> because in Arabic, Rackham or Rakam means numbers. And I love numbers. So I was like, all right, that'll work out. And then later, the guy was like, hey, Rackham is also a name from like Ender's Sagas. He was like, first of all, <laughs> please stop harassing me because uh, <laughs> Super Cowboy 2000 is going to come and, and harass <laughs> Um, and I just kept the name, and that was in nineteen like eighty nine or something. And that's as old as me. Yay! You're from oh nineteen eighty nine. Thanks for making. Thank you for making me feel young, Rob. <laughs> I'm from nineteen eighty nine. I'm an I'm an eighty eighties kid technically. Yeah. Um, Rakam Rakam means numbers in Arabic. That's cool. It does. Uh, and it's spelled it's like that, or. Well, obviously, it's well, not spelled like that. Oh, it's spelled in Arabic. <laughs> but it's but if you if you anglicize the word, it's spelled it's spelled like that. <laughs> yes, if you anglicize the word, yes, then the Arabic would become whatever combination to make that noise. This word. Yeah, that's as good as anything else. It's like I was talking to my friend, my friends over from Japan uh, for this week, and I was talking to him about some Japanese stuff, and and uh, I, I just kept like infuriating him because i kept asking for like think how things are spelled and he's like it's not spelled like anything it's like spelled in it japanese it's spelled in kanji <laughs> <laughs> but i is don't get it <laughs> put it in put it in a latin alphabet for me or i don't understand yeah in ancient egypt does, so there's hieroglyphics um, <laughs> how's, how's that spelled help me how does this spell this is the spelling no write it like normal people write, <laughs> write it I like don't. a normal person <laughs> Just, please don't yeah <laughs> I don't understand. Should, do you have you a flag? Him. Yeah, do you have a flag? No <laughs> country, no flag. Yeah. Uh, I love Eddie Izzard. Anyway. Uh, but yeah, that's... Uh, so, yeah, that's the name that I've been using. You can find me, like, on Reddit, under Rackham. I, I don't have an Instagram, but if I did, it would be under Rackham. Um, I'm sure if I had an OnlyFans, it would be under the same uh, <laughs> moniker. Uh, but my email, you know, you can... Every email, guys, sign me up for all the the, the list. Please don't. Uh, but, you know, like rack them, uh, rack them on everything. Means, but it's yeah, it's gonna be uh, my account. So, how about you? How did you come up with the Robert Hartley GM? I feel like it's very uh, innovative. <laughs> it is pretty innovative. I was like, it sounds cool, you know, and just had a good mouth feel. Robert mm. Hartley. Robert Hartley. But the GM really does it. The, G the GM actually did have a very minor story to it, is that I just decided uh, very early, it was Robert Hartley DM on Twitch, and then I decided mm. really early, like, oh, future-proof yourself. <laughs> make sure that you're make sure that you're just not tying yourself to the D&D &D brand too much. Uh, so before mm. I'd gotten too much of a, a following, uh, I, I thankfully thought about it and, and switched it to GM, just so I can be a little more future-proofed. So here's what happens, Rob. You're walking down the street. You stumble. You hit. Poof, the world shatters into a billion pieces. We rewind time. You don't use Robert Hartley GM. What is what is your moniker instead? What is your pseudonym? What is the handle you would have? Um, yeah. I, I chose Why Robert Hartley so that I wouldn't have to come up with a name. I don't like naming and things. Then, and now we are. We're back in it. And now we're back into the situation where I have the to. The angels name of it. fate are weighing your decisions. Um, what should we do? What do I call my brand? What is my brand? I don't know. That's the thing. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know. You're playing World of Warcraft. You're creating a blood elf because whatever reason, and you need to name a, a, a character. You're not hitting that random button. What are you naming that character? Um, my, well, that's a different question because uh, my characters in, in video games and stuff usually go with Bob. Uh, Bob. Versions of Bob. Bobby. 
Bob, Bob, if I'm naming a city in some some city or something, it's going to be like Bobopolis. Uh, it's like yep. it's usually Bob Bob related uh, for all of my character things. And so he orders the Bobachino. Bob, Bobachino, yeah, Star Spark. Sure. Uh, so if I was naming a character, it'd be it'd be Bob sort of thing in a video game or something. If I was uh, to name it, uh, if I was to name my brand though, what is my brand? D and D. Tips, oh, GM, Tresem Entertainment. Tresem Entertainment. Tresem Entertainment does actually sound pretty good. Tresem it Entertainment. It does. Sounds like an adult a... uh, video store. Tresem. <laughs> which is the which is what I'm going for as as, yes. as a dungeon master. Welcome to, welcome to the stage, Tresem. Tresem. Wow, wow. <laughs> Just f Woo! lots of yeah! lots of uh, flicking of of uh, what do they call them like those big feathery boas. Uh, yeah, that's it. Put it back on. Just put it. Back on. <laughs> Take it off. <laughs> I made a mistake. Put it back on. Put it back on. I, I immediately regret asking for that. Uh, um, yeah, if you had, I mean, it's, it's not an easy question though, right? It because... isn't. It isn't. I, I don't know what it would be. Uh, I would probably have something to do with, um, d like, I'd probably try and go for something to do with like D and D advice, but like, not, hmm. kind of, like, I, I don't know, because I would also feel weird about putting myself, like, naming myself in a position where I am giving people advice. Like that is mm. uh, that is what I do um, for uh, some of what I do, but I, it still mm. feels weird to be like, come to me for your D and D advice. Like, what, what I know, do I, I know. I, yeah, I I feel the same way, uh, which is why I didn't call myself GM Workshop because that would have been really awkward. And, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but workshop's a good one because workshop is like it, to workshop something is to like work yeah. it out together. Like, yeah, yeah. So about, oh, you could have been really GM good. GM Brainstorm. GM Brainstorm. GM brainstorm Ooh. could be could be cool, because um, uh, then because then it's uh, I could also just argue that it's like me having like an epileptic fit or something. That's a brainstorm, yeah. isn't it? <laughs> I, mean, I would watch that content on a hundred percent basis <laughs> all the time, <laughs> all the time. So what? Okay, I know I've heard this story before, but somebody asked me to to remind you, and I'm gonna pretend I didn't know the story because it's so painful for you, and I'd love to revisit it. Can you tell me about that time where? Uh, and the question was posed as Viva La Diet League. <laughs> <laughs> um, rec received it because they typoed the, the, they, they typoed the hell out of the question which killed me um, tell me about that time when Viva La Diet League received a book about D&D &D and there was like this nameless GM or something Fucking that hell. ran their group what, what's this story what's this about uh, I don't know what you're talking about I don't, um, <laughs> there's, a, there's a book there's evidence there's physical <laughs> physical evidence I think physical evidence is it physical evidence right here on my bookshelf could be. It, I don't see it... a I don't see a green dragon on your shelf, Rob. Um, I don't have a green dragon. There's a I do have oh. a green dragon. Check this oh. out. Show me. Show me your moves. I have a green. Oh, I have the. I have a green dragon, right? But nice. for the eagle-eyed viewers, it has a horn on its head like a rhino, mm. which is which is the design of a blue dragon in D and D yes. five e. Um, but but this there green. is but this is a, this is repainted right this is a painted mini yes but it was called but if you green look... dragon on the box which is why my yeah, friend look, bought me... it and painted it green for me as a gift because i was hitting him you. with a green dragon in one of in one of my okay. games he can't hear us say what you want about him right now quick he'll never watch this back your friend what he bought what what your friend bought you is a legitimate green dragon but this is the pathfinder pathfinder green dragon. that's right it's so, Pathfinder okay, Green okay. Dragon. You have fucking everything. I can't have one thing, Rackham. Uh, you, you can't have. You have something. You <laughs> I, can't, have... I can't have one thing that you don't have with your ten thousand minis. And I, he I always and he knows where they all are as well. Um. So so uh yeah he he I was I was throwing a green dragon at him in um in in a game and he as a gift got me a green dragon because I didn't have one and he was so uh, he's super um excited to give me it and I was like oh thank you very much. He's like, what? And I was like, nothing. <laughs> He's like, what? It's a green jet. And I was like, it's great. He's like, yeah. there's something. And I was like, this is a blue dragon design. It's got a, yeah. it's got a horn on its head. He's like, what? But it said green dragon on the box. And then we learned it was a Pathfinder green dragon. So I do technically have a green dragon. I don't have a green dragon of the design of uh, Wait, uh, 5e. Uh, while you get the book that you get. I have, I have uh, lots of, I've got a red dragon. I've got a black dragon that's definitely black. 
Uh, I've got a white dragon. I've got a bunch of white that's dragons, green actually. Dragon I've got a wormling. Oh, look at that. Yes, that's what I want. Fucking love the green dragon design. It's snake-like and like a garial mouth. I do love so the green came dragon fairly, design. It, if, it came out fairly recently, the adult green. Uh, it's got some yellowing on it and stuff, but it's a cool dude. It's a cool dude. Look, so it's a hello, yellow dragon. my name's Lucy Freak. I'm <laughs> Lucy Freak. Hello. This is how I Hi. sounded. Hello. Yeah. I don't, I don't know why everybody was so dis disappointed. Um, I just lost my glasses. I'm, I'm just angry because I can't see you guys. <laughs> I just can't see anything. I kept um, thinking it was my wife, but it was random animals that I was looking for. <laughs> <laughs> My wife's quite a beast. Um, I So I've got a bunch of dragons. I've got some Draco liches. Those are cool. Um, but no, I don't have a, a green like that yet. I want it. Uh, what's the what's the, what's the the one that I have that you don't? The You had... The, 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 so there's the, Arbiturites. The, the, uh, is, he, is he missing? The, 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 big, the big, big, big guy? Do you have the big guy? Ding, I don't ding, have the... Ding. Oh, yeah. Oh. The, the, uh, the, the massive... Goblin? The garden gnome? The, the massive gardenal thing, the... This yeah, guy. right here. Yeah, you can see it right behind me there. Uh, oh yeah, you can. It's, it's off screen on on the um, on the. Oh, okay, uh, but the it's industry. there. The gar <laughs> My wife calls him the garden gnome. The garden gnome. <laughs> yeah, because he's he's enormous. Like, the, but you, what is. you have, I don't. There are two minis that you have that I don't have. In fact, there's the big white uh, arbitrary or however you pronounce <laughs> it. Ha! You don't have arbitrus arbitrary arbitrary. Sorry, man, she's. Hard to get, but I'm gonna have to get her because this because I can't have Rathmon and not like have a mini war. <laughs> come on, come hey on. chat, get... chat. While he's not looking, quit. Put some potatoes in chat. Just Jesus. Potatoes. Let's, let's take take over with some potatoes. Ugh. For those of you who have them, just get them in there. Get them in there. All right. Thank you to my fans. My fans send me some awesome stuff sometimes, and this was one of the ones I got in early days. Oh, that's I... amazing. She is enormous, and then another fan. She has a dog a collar. She's got yeah. She's got a little cat collar that says uh, "Big Girl" on it. Nice. Um, I almost bought it. She's so amazing. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna... Very sharp, like genuinely very yes. sharp. She could do some yeah. serious damage, like D4 slashing, piercing damage, just from picking her up. But they they had it in my local gaming store, but she was unpainted because WizKids made a mistake in the early print runs of this mini, and ah. they sent a bunch of them unpainted. And I was like, I'm not paying a hundred bucks for an unpainted mini. Take it back. And then they never received the replacement, so I never bought her in the end. Guts, man. Sad. Sad. And now I have one that you don't. Ha 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 ha. You <laughs> have seven hundred that I don't. <laughs> That's okay. And then the other mini that you have that I don't is the Mind Witness. I haven't been able to find one. Oh, okay. Perfect. And I know you have one. I've seen it. I've seen it. I have got a mind but... witness. Where is it? It's kind of... Shit, it's doing that. Uh, where's my mind witness? It's there. Right ha. Look at that. That's a face you want to wake up to every day. <laughs> Hi, darling. Hi. This is uh, what happens That's when great. you uh, have a mind flare and a beholder. Behold. Mm -hmm. Witness. Ha 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 ha. Play on words. Oh, that's clever. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, it's a, cool, it's a cool one. I haven't used it in a game yet. I haven't used either of those in a game yet. Do you ever get accused... Well, I want to hear about the Viva La Diet book, but uh, do you ever get accused or asked uh, either by your audience or your significant other, other, like, why do you need all these minis? Are you going to oh, use yeah. them? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Not, 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 not anymore. She, she stopped asking me. But in early days, when I was sent uh, uh, minis for the Descent into Avernus thing, the first the first thing that we did for the Viva guys, and the, the whiz kids were like, yeah, we'll send you all the minis you need for it. What do you need? And I was like, whatever you can send. Everything. And so nice. they sent just a bunch of them. They didn't send individuals. They sent just like the actual boxes, uh, like nice. just like you'd buy off the shelves. Um, the the sort of booster pack kind of things where yeah. you don't really know what you're getting inside of them, and they sent bricks and bricks of them, and I was like, "Oh, my heart is so jealous right now." Rob. I was I was like, "Thank you." Do I have to send them back? What is it? How do I? And they were just like, "This is yours," and I was like, <gasps> "Perks of the yeah. job. <laughs> this is incredible." And that started that kick started my collection. Uh, it was most of the giants that I have most of the in individuals and stuff the little elementals and things so i had a whole, whole bunch of stuff from descent to avernus um and then uh after that 
I know you get the wide. Yeah, after after like after that, that, I had a bunch of um, I had a bunch of them that were like triple ups. Like I had three of the same fire giant, and there's two different designs mm-hmm. of fire giant. So I had mm-hmm. two of one of de- one design and three of another, and I was like, I'm never going to need this many fire giants. Uh, so I That's sold good. a few of them. Yeah, those those ones. So I said I sold a few of them on um, uh, on on Trade Me uh, New Zealand's like eBay. Um, to try and you know make some money back because I was still a student at the time and stuff, so that was good. Um, but I kept the vast majority of them. And Lizzie's like, "Do you do, do you need these many?" And then like I asked, uh, like I started, whenever I'd say something about like, "Oh, wizards kids are sending me some minis for like, um, uh, for for Wild Beyond the Witchlight or whatever," or they've sent them to yeah. Adam and I have to go around Adam's to pick them up. Um, she'd be like do you need more and i was like yeah i need more because because yeah. you know yeah. i've got there's always more designs of people and more more monsters and more different uh, uh poses that the people can be in that you don't have yet. i've just given up i'm like listen i like to play with dolls okay and just let me play with my dolls. <laughs> this, is the one, this is the one thing i collect i don't i don't, i'm not much of a dice goblin i don't really hoard dice i have plenty of dice and if i don't ever get another set of dice like so be it like i've got enough to play mm-hmm. with um, I've got enough to play with and to give out to everybody at my table so that everybody's got the set to play with and it doesn't really bother me that much. I like dice. Oh, wait, t- t- tell me about, them. you You mentioned the word, oh, it's, it's mirror. I do. But don't you, you have that sponsorship, right? Tell me about it. Um, Since you mentioned Dice Goblin. Dice Goblin. Dice Goblin UK, yeah. Um, uh, they they were a uh, UK company. They are a UK company that makes um, makes affordable dice. Um, and they got in touch saying, hey, we've got a Kickstarter. And uh, and would you would you help us promote it? And so uh, and so I did. They've, their Kickstarter's ended now, but they, mm-hmm. uh, they I think they achieved all of their goals. Um, it was a set for every, uh, every one of the 12 Class. original classes of 5e. Uh, so, so there was like a, a ninja class, which was the rogue class and such, and, mm-hmm. and so on. Um, very cool, chunky font and uh, really simple designs. Uh, easy to easy to read and yet still kind of pretty. Um, there's there's an inverse relationship I found with dice as to like how intricate and ornate and pretty they are and how easy to read they are. Yeah. <laughs> and and so they found a nice balance like somewhere in the middle of that where it's like yeah. nice and easy to read but also pretty pretty. Um, let me, uh, let, let yeah, me, let cool me sh- hang on. We're, we're gonna do more shilling. Hang on. Uh, what about? Uh, can you tell me about Amazon Prime, Rob? <laughs> sure. Amazon Prime is. What are we? Are we ever gonna get to this book that you wanted to troll me about in the first place? I do. I do. I do. <laughs> People, they forget they have. What's this Amazon Prime? Tell Amazon Prime it. is. Uh, is a, if you have Amazon Prime, you can get a subscription with it. Um, what? So yeah, yeah. If you for free for free, yeah. So if you have Amazon Prime and you're not already oh using God. your Prime subscription with something else, then because Amazon, our overlords and rulers um uh, uh, have, uh, have, Jeff Bezos. have amazon the give the 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 service that offers you things to your door and then also twitch which makes no sense to me wow. at all but they own them both and so if you've got a prime account you can get a free sub sub account every month and and Shocking. that and the person you sub to with your amazon prime sub gets the money still as if you had paid for it Oh my god. So, you know, if you're not using your Amazon Prime account for anybody, make sure you do so. Yeah, use it here. It's great. Wow. Okay, show me the book. Um, So, back in 2020, I believe it was, Mm. they they brought out the 2021 Dungeons & Dragons Annual. It's got to be a collector's item. I've never seen this in person. I've legitimately <laughs> never seen this in person. <laughs> the Dungeons & Dragons Annual came out in 2020, uh, 2020 for 2021. Um, mm. And they sent it to us. And they were like, whoa, that's cool. Um, and the fun thing is, if I was to hold this up to you, I've never actually noticed this until looking at it right now. Um, mm. If I was to hold this up to the camera, which is um, which is, which is is mirrored, remember? Dungeons mm-hmm. & Dragons mirrored. But the ampersand on all of the dice inside... <laughs> Is it's now backwards. the right way around because it's backwards. It's printed backwards nice. on the inside. Nice. Which I've only just noticed right now, on on both front and back cover, it seems. It's a riddle. Maybe if you connect them all in the right way, <laughs> it spells out seven eighty five. <laughs> that must be it. There's, there are seven hundred and eighty five dice on the front and back covers. Again. So uh, I'm not sure what the purpose of this annual is or who it's meant for, but it's, uh, it's 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 a nice sort of big chunky thing. You know, you you remember annuals. You're you're an old person. 
You're, you're I do remember. remember. I used you're... to get the periodical. And the and and there's like there's like games in there for the kids to oh. play, and there's like you know word searches and stuff. And there's this one's a um uh, a brief history of D and D. It talks about a timeline oh. and. It's uh, interesting stuff. I should probably sit down and actually read the damn thing. Uh, it gives you like a very brief, very brief overview of like creating a character, how to get into oh the game, God. all sorts of fun like so things. Fun. It's a lot of fun things. However, there's also uh, another cool fun thing in here called spectator mode. Find oh. a live stream game on twitch.tv slash dnd. Welcome oh. to the wild and wonderful world of real play live streams, where actors, comedians, vloggers, and more stream their D&D games online for fans to enjoy. There are dozens oh. of brilliant games to choose from, ranging from the serious to the silly, the dark to the playful, from one-shots to in-depth year-long campaigns. Whatever you want from a D&D game, there's a live stream for you. And here's some examples of live streams. Critical Role, Rivals of Waterdeep, Dark Lanterns, Viva the Dirt League, right there, look, in the same... Same oh, breath wow. as as Critical Role and high, uh, above High Rollers even, literally nice. High Rollers, Ox Adventure, and Questing Time, pretty cool stuff, eh? It's pretty cool That's that we're in neat. that we're in that uh, that that annual to, together with. I've the, never heard of this high Schmid esteem, Schmid 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 formidable Schmid formidable role. Oh man, I don't know formidable role. Maybe that's what I should have named myself. I'm gonna I'm going nice. with that, formidable role. Um, nice. and your your name will be uh, Bat Burser. <laughs> And, uh, nobody will know the difference. <laughs> the um the the one for all guys, the the deer stalker guys, uh for their skits, they the the guy played by Kendall, the 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 DM in that series is called Pat Purser, but his name nice. is only ever said as Patrick. <laughs> Um, anyway, it talks about who Viva the Dirt League is. It talks about who's in the party. It talks about uh, their cast. It talks about what mm. kind of skits they do, and that's it. It does not mention my name once. Oh. oh, but that's uh, no. There must be a mistake. <laughs> there was a mistake. The there was a mistake, and that they did not, not, not mentioning my name at all in the in the D and D annual. Um, and then they sent me, be... uh, and then they sent me a, a an embossed book because it we should be cer it's certainly personalized. They would never say something like Game Master, or Dungeon Master. <laughs> it would say we Robert said, Hartley we, GM. Yes, we had we had Tasha's Cauldron of Everything, uh, and we were responsible for uh, we were responsible for. Ah, fuck! I can't be bothered getting out. <laughs> you know the you know the punchline. Um, we we were we were partly responsible for advertising Tasha's Cauldron of Everything. Uh, we were we were one of the influencers that they um, approached to uh, mm. to 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 promote the book. Uh, and so they sent us all an embossed copy of it. And embossed on mine, it just says Game Master or Dungeon Master, I think. Nice. Which is you know great and personal. Um, did you, Did you think? Watch this. Why don't you Uno reverse D and D? <laughs> Go to your local passport shop because that's what it's called, and legally change your name to Dungeon, to Dungeon Master, Master, and then and then sue them for infringement. <laughs> All you gotta do is have like a, a really you shave your head, have the long white spindly hair, <laughs> and, and just hold yourself like this, right? And Be put like, the costume on. Can't believe you've do. done this. Hey, I, I can't believe. Welcome to the realms of dungeons and uh, dragons. I am Dungeon Master, and then I am Dungeon Master. I think that might be undermined by the fact that Dungeons and Dragons literally pre predates me and my existence. I don't think I don't think they can prove that. I don't think they can prove that. So it's fine. <laughs> it's not how numbers work. I'm pretty sure that you have 785 witnesses that could they could vouch <laughs> the other way. So we're good. Uh, but that's funny. Uh, uh, so. Yeah, no, sure. you shut up. It's my interview channel. You, you... <laughs> I'm really bad at being. I love interviewing people, so this is. I flipped it on you. See? So, so uh, where are you from? Dox yourself. Oh, let let me do that. So my exact address, chat, write it down. <laughs> uh, so it's a long story, but in essence, uh, I grew up in Europe, um, in France, in fact. So I'm. You grew uh, up in France. French. I did. Uh, we born in France. Non, je suis pas né en France, mais j'ai vécu en France pendant quand même 18 ans. Donc ma première langue c'est le français, et puis ensuite l'anglais, et puis ensuite autre chose. Uh, so yeah, so je, no, je, je ne parle, uh, je ne parle Sylvain. Um, ah. <laughs> we we need to speak in the common tongue. Um, so I don't. Uh, I wasn't born in France. I was born in the Middle East. Uh, shout out to Jordan, to all my people from Jordan who have the internet and are watching this right now. So and you. <laughs> 
Uh, what's that, dude? Are you, are you, the, are you Jord Jordan, you Jordanese? What's the, what's the, uh, demonym? Jordan, uh, Jordanic? It's, it's, Jordanic, I think, is right. Jordan. It's, it's Michael Jordanic. <laughs> We're all known as Michael Jordanics. Uh, I regularly dunk with hummus in one hand and tabula in the other. Uh, no, it's Jordanian. Um, Jordanian? Oh, Jordanian, yes. Yeah. So, so I was born in Jordan, but we... Is it like in, Jordanian in... or Jordanian? With an A. Jordan, Jordanian, Jord like Romanian. Nailed. Exactly. Jordanian. Yeah. Cool. Except way cooler because we have, you know, uh, tabula and hummus and like baba ganoush and stuff. Uh, <laughs> and what, what, what do they have? I have no idea. Probably cool stuff too. Romanians? Um, they have Transylvania. They have Dracula. Okay, I have sand. <laughs> like, I mean, I feel like I win that exchange. And I have, like, it feels like the <laughs> shittiest. It feels like the shittiest wizards duel. <laughs> like <laughs> I will become Dracula, and you just like throw sand in his eyes, and he's like, "Ah, fuck! What? Ow! Oh, that's why is he throwing sand? That's not cool." Because it's what the, you want to show water in your face next. He <laughs> just, just throws a lump of hummus at him, and he's like, "Is there garlic in this? Oh my god! Ah, you win." It's, uh, exactly, you would win. It's garlic <laughs> sauce, which is delicious. You would default uh, win. Um, Pocket sand. Suck it, Transylvania. Uh, we found the uh, we found our enemies. We never knew, but that's what it was. Uh, and then we lived. I lived in France, in the southeastern France, in the Côte d'Azur. Imagine. It was nice, dude. We were on the beach. It was great. And then at some point, my parents were like, hey, let's move to North America. I was like, why? Because, <laughs> we're because in the south we, of hate, France. we hate the beach. We hate having pastis and, you know, delicious food and being healthy and being super hot. I used to be super hot, Rob, um, <laughs> and, uh, because I was in the south of France. And then reality hit me like a ton of bricks. Uh, so I moved to North America when I was 19-ish. Um, and then I had the pleasure of me meeting my better half fairly quickly, actually. Uh, and then emigrated, immigrated, moved the, to Canada. The, um, the, the benefit, though, is that uh, you're not surrounded by the French anymore. So, yeah. Ah, but the downside is Quebec is next door. So, ah, it, like, same, same. Damn. Same, same. Be um, so much, it'd be like, France is wonderful if it wasn't for the French. Uh, which I'm, which what? I'm, which I'm obligated to say as a British, as a you British. You have to, uh, and I would make a joke about 1966 World Cup, but you don't watch footy, so who cares? Um, no, but the, you know, France is great, except Paris. I, I, you know, I Paris never sucks. had a good experience in Paris. Yeah. Um, uh, no, Parisians are mm, chef's kiss. Uh, no, uh, French people are wonderful. English people are okay, uh, and here in Canada, people are super nice. So I'm in Canada now. And I get up every day at 4.45, Rob, to uh, truck my wares on Twitch for um, all eight of my viewers who are wonderful, and I love them very much. Uh, and that's how it is. How about you? How, why do you? how do you do that? Why? How How? and why do you, would you, how, I'm not, I don't understand morning people. <laughs> so so it's, a, it's such a foreign concept to me that you would get up so early to do, to do anything. <laughs> because, I'll tell you why, um, genuinely, all right, this is me serious mode. Oh, wow. Just... I don't think I've ever seen this, guys. Oh, man, I'm about to... I, I'm really gassy, actually, that's what it is. Um, <laughs> so, uh, no, so in the beginning of the pandemic... Do you remember the pandemic? When, and now um, it's over, thank God, COVID's gone. Do you remember this? Oh, like, yeah. COVID and it's oh, just COVID. disappeared overnight. Wow. That was Memories. crazy. Memories. Eh? Good crazy days. Crazy time. Good days. Whew. Um, so about, like, in March 2021, um, I, I'd started playing, like, Among Us, like everybody else, because, you know, what, what else was there to do at that time of life? <laughs> And then I was like, hey, it was like I... it was like it was the world's thing. It was just like it everybody's was. doing like, this now. For like two months, like everywhere you went was just like <laughs> Among Us, Left Right. Like, what is this little bean that's walking around? And then I put like six hundred hours in the game in like two months because that's how much I loved it. Yeah. Um. So I streamed a little bit of Among Us with some friends that I had uh, that I no longer have because you know uh, I'm old and uh, uh, grumpy, grumpy pants. And I won too much. You make it sound like your friends have all died of old age. <laughs> <laughs> they might have rest in peace kevin and uh, um so then i was like you know what i like and my wife was like supportive about this she's like rack em. she doesn't call me rack but let's pretend rack <laughs> um you fantastic human being she says regularly uh, <laughs> since, Gloria, we're since we're pretending might as well go since all we're pretending glory of my life who has never done anything wrong in his entire life it's like yes speak more please um, and she's like, no, you know, you're, you're like D and D. You're decent at it. So why don't you do something with D and D on Twitch? And I was like, whoa, that's good. Why not? And I did a bit of research. So I'll be honest. I googled uh, twice, which is about as much research as I can stomach. And the number one thing I saw on on Facebook, 
uh, on the Facebook, on Reddit, on Discord, were people saying, I don't have a place to play D&D. And my gut was, maybe I can be the place where people go play D&D. Maybe I can create a space where people can come and hang out and I could do my best with like, you know, I, I legitimately, my goals was to get like five to 10 people in the stream and then play with them D&D. That was it. That was what I was aiming for. And I started and I was like talking about, uh, nobody would show up obviously. And I was just doing my thing and I would talk about prep and I was just entertaining myself like you do. And slowly and surely people in Australia, I guess, cause that's the time zone that matched up. Um, and the reason I do it so early in the morning is because I have two kids, I have a full-time job. I love hanging out with my family. So I do it before anybody wakes up. I get up early in the morning. I do it cause it brings me satisfaction. It allows me to be creative. It's fun. It's not about the money, I tell you that much. Um, and <laughs> uh, the extra, you know, two hundred dollars a month is is not why I do it. And in fact, I, I reinvest all that money into the community. So uh, I I can honestly say I have lost money streaming on Twitch, and that's mm. fine. Um, and it's been a, a it's been a lot of fun. Like I actually look forward to getting up at the crack ass of dawn, and getting on. And be like, what are we doing today? Let's let's see what crazy adventures chat is going to get up to. And uh, and I think. You know, having a space for people to go be creative, especially in a time when everybody was stuck at home and having a place to share in communal storytelling, that's why you do Twitch plays, right? Like it's sort mm -hmm. of, or, or Twitch uh, Twitch tales. It's because it sort of scratches that itch that we have a need for. Mm -hmm. um, and that's it. That's the that's the whole shebang. That's it. Excellent. I mean, good on you. I've never been a morning person, so it's a foreign concept to me to be able to get up that early for anything. I could barely get up for a 9 a.m. stream this morning, so uh so more power to you uh whereas on the other end of the day i can stay up till 3 a.m working like i find yeah. i find my my most productive time of the day is uh after 10 p.m because yeah. my fiance has gone to bed uh we've put the dog in his crate um there's so much so many fewer distractions i don't have obligations to be doing anything else i can just be working i can just be i can just be yeah. on my on my computer uh, doing whatever I need to be doing, editing and, and catching up on little jobs and stuff. I'm sure you'll identify with this, right? There are two places I find that are most creative and the, all the other DMs and GMs I've spoken to are fairly similar. One used to be on the commute to work where in the car, you just, it's silly voice time where yeah. I'm just like yeah, driving yeah, yeah, to work yeah, yeah. and I'm like, yeah. What is it? What is the giant sound? Oh, it's me. I'm a, I'm a, a, I'm a giant. I'm a, I'm a giant. I'm a giant. Yeah, exactly. I'm, a, I'm a giant. I'm a giant. I'm a giant. And then you're like, oh, I've done that voice before. What if I drop it even? I'm a giant. I speak with you. Oh, that's good. Let me make note of that. Cool. <laughs> what was... And then you have conversations by yourself. I swear people that are driving around you, seeing you talk to yourself, must think, I hope they're thinking you're in a, you know, like hands-free it's... phone call, but it's just me making noises in the <laughs> need car, to right? Need to live in New York, and then nobody would even notice. Yeah, just walking down. <laughs> I find myself in the house around my family, sometimes going, oh, right. Does a Meredith lay eggs or does she lay live young? And then I walk <laughs> off and they're like, what did he say? I'm like, yeah, I don't know. And so in the car was like a, a big moment of like sort of walking through comp made up conversations, yeah. arguments that yeah. I would invariably win because <laughs> I'm course. the best in my own head. Uh, otherwise it's shower like i'm in the shower like it's quiet and i could be like oh right and then i could be creative in the shower which is why i take seven hour showers now um, <laughs> and so i'm like uh but i don't know where you so at night you find your creativity is there other places um, that yeah you know? i uh walking used to be a big one i don't tend to walk too much anymore and i want to get uh, i want to get harvey to a point where he is uh harvey's my dog uh to get to him to mm -hmm. a point where he can uh actually pay attention to me while he's walking like be well behaved and he's not because he's a little mm -hmm. puppy but when he gets to a point where i can take him for a walk and not be thinking about him all of the time and like trying to, yeah. to actively train him like walking him is a very active process at the moment and when i can get it back to being a passive thing it'll be great because i it will prompt me to go for my walks and i find that when i'm out and walking uh, i'm very creative and so when i was at drama school uh, when i was at um university i would walk home from university every day and it was like a four and a half kilometer walk um uh, but it allowed me 45 minutes of just of of just thinking uh, I'd, I, and mm. if i had a game that night like that's when i would do all of my prep just like on the walk home and thinking about mm. i'd be walking through scenes that might happen and like interactions that they might come across and people that they'll talk to and uh what sort of plot hooks i need to drop and things that i need to remember and it would it would all happen before i get home and yeah, then it's, and it's, then I'd get home and have like you know half an hour before they arrive to be like let's just jot down everything that was just in my head before I forget yeah. it all. Yeah, 
I find that, like, this is one of the, you know, when you're talking about people coming to you for advice, it's a weird piece of advice to give, but often it's, like, embody that character. Like, try to see, it's the same thing that it, when, I, I did a bit of stand-up, it was cringe, but I had a lot of fun with it. I did some improv, and one of the things, and you did, I mean, you, I'm talking to an actor, like, who am I, who am I explaining this shit to? Um, but it's finding the Everybody. lens that the, there's not, the, there's more the, people watching, I don't know if you noticed. Chat, <laughs> chat, I'm, 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 I'm pretending it's just you, because I find it to be uh, less stressful, but chat, one of the things that I recommend um, is that find the thing that's for that character, the lens that they see the world through, and that's all the prep I need to do anymore. Like, I've been doing it for, you know, a long time. But once I know what the character views the world as, are they, you know, this gruntled veteran that is disillusioned because they've come home for the war and seen for what it is? And that's the lens that they have of the world. So every interaction that they have with NPCs or PCs is going to be with that lens in mind. If they ask about the village, he's going to be like, yeah, I, I bled and fought for this village and nobody respects me. And so I'm very bitter about the whole affair. He won't explain it that way, but that's sort of, I know the character. I can think as the character and therefore I don't really need to prepare all that much. Um, and I find that to be super useful. And those hours that you're talking about and embodying or thinking about those characters in that way, that's the most useful prep I can ever come up with. It is. It's, and it's fantastic advice. It's, it's to think like that person. To, to uh, people, like, there's a, there's a, what's the word? There's a, um, an anxiety around, like, uh, how do you, how do you, how do you, uh, improvise on the spot how do you come up with the story how do you know where it's going and stuff and it's just about a matter of just knowing who the person is well enough like who know the people that you're playing as the npcs and then you can mm -hmm. then, and then you'll find the improvisation just happens because you can you can just think and obviously there's, there is a skill in emp mm -hmm. uh, being empathetic and knowing how to uh, how to put yourself in other people's shoes is not just a, it's not a thing that everybody can do uh, as easily but with practice, you can get better at it, like anything, and you can get better at putting yourself in the shoes of that person and going, how would they react in this situation? I couldn't have possibly mm -hmm. prepared for every eventuality. I didn't know that he was going to use Charm Monster on him and it was going to fail. But now that he has, I put myself in the position and go, I'm a shopkeeper. I'm, I, I hate magic because I've seen firsthand what it does to people during the war and stuff, and people sure. were abusing yeah. magic and... Okay, now I'm I'm returned to, and I've got like um, maybe I've maybe I've got PTSD from the war, or maybe I'm just disgruntled and kind of mm -hmm. sh shitty at the world, and especially people who use magic. And now this guy's walked in, tried to charm me, uh, and I know that he's using magic. I'm gonna hate him. I might even get violent. Okay, that's what I'm gonna do. And then it's just yeah. and things just come to you. Uh, all of that thought process happens instantaneously <laughs> and you, yeah, and you go you go yeah. this guy's going to attack you because you've tried to use magic on him and he's he's not having it um so yeah. the shopkeeper pulls out his his old uh, slightly rusted sword and he says get out of my shop and he and he attacks real initiative and you're like yeah. oh yeah. but he's a merchant i didn't know he was going to have levels yeah and he calls for the guards and now you're in trouble and now you're in like, trouble. oh cool yeah and now we have a story because position. we have conflict uh, do you do you ever do this? Uh, sorry, I'm I'm asking you the questions, Rob. We've we've covered That's none so of the topics we wanted to cover. We didn't um, do a very good job of like uh, at the at the start, like explaining who you are and where people can find you and why you were on my show anyway. <laughs> cool. Uh, so let's get that anyway. So um, I do this because I talk to chat all the time, and I know you do the same thing. Do you ever find that you p f call people in real life chat? Have you done that? Yet? <laughs> no. Like I, w I, I was in the car, I'm taking the kids <laughs> no. to get ice cream, and I'm I'm like, all right. Instead of saying, okay, kids, what flavor ice cream do you want? I turn around and say, okay, chat. And then my wife looks at me with eyes the size of a lighthouse. And she's like, did you just call your children chat? I was like, yep, I did. Never mind. And that was that, was that next level, dude. That was that that absolute. the best. Oh, my God. That's the best. Oh, that's yeah. the best. <laughs> okay, chat. What do you want? I'm going to start doing that just for, you want? for fun. I'm going to start talking to my friends as if they're chat. All right, chat. What do we do? <laughs> what are we doing next? Did, did Maybe it says chat? it says it says more about me uh, me than than you there that I haven't done that yet because maybe I just don't pay pay as much attention to my chat as you do <laughs> to yours. I know for, I know yeah. for instance during these these uh, short rest streams I completely neglect and ignore my chat because I'm talking to my guest, uh, so I'm, I'm 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 paying half mind to them. But yeah. I uh, should tell my kids, hey, don't forget to smash and uh, the subscribe, <laughs> that subscribe button. Those bits they go and, and put them to bed like you finish the fox and socks and don't forget to hit like and smash the subscribe button like what dad never mind dude just go to sleep <laughs>
Tell your friends about Everybody the show. Needs... Yeah, yeah. Here's here's my business card. Hand it out to your kids at school. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. <laughs> so stupid i'm so stupid dude what can you do <laughs> it's it's fun though um i want to talk about your minis uh tell me tell me about your minis and your mini collection and how that how that uh, began and what what it grew from what was sure. your what were your first minis so uh hey can i sh i could show you uh my this is my desk that's immediately beside me it's very messy okay i don't want to show you the rest of my desk because it's embarrassing all right but i'm going to show you this um Mira, watch this. This is Spanish. Mira means uh, look in Spanish because I'm multilingual like this. Boom. Wait, so you speak right, Spanish is... as well? I do speak Spanish. I speak Spanish, Arabic, French, and English, and a, a dab of really making bad the, English. Making the rest of us um, look bad. So this is like my desk. You can see that it's very messy. There's that, a green that, dragon. That is messy. Uh, and it's a, there's yeah. a lot of maze. So I've, on this table, I've got like probably 200 odd minis right now that are just completely in disarray. Dwarven Forge stuff. And I just haven't had a chance to say, look. Who's this guy? Hey, it's an Abolith. Yeah. It is an Abolith. I, I got that I guy. Did I put him on my... Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll revert the camera back to my face uh, so I can show you... The <coughs> that's incredible. So, so those, are just, that, that's, that, those are just minis on your desk. Yeah, and then... That's, that's more minis like than a lot of people have. <laughs> uh, and they're the ones that are just not yet sorted. <laughs> I have about a hundred and odd minis that are just in front of me you can't see because it's messy. And then I have... Um, like D and D coins, and I've got like this D and D mug, and I've got like D and D's everywhere in my life, and then uh, probably like a uh, hundred dice. Anyway, at some point, my wife uh, and I had to talk about the quantity of minis that I have, and she's like, "You need to organize them." So we bought a tax cabinet at IKEA. That's good. And that's where I'm supposed to store my minis. So I've got shelves of minis and terrain, and my dragons are up there. Those that fit, and so I've too. got probably. I've got a few, you know, I've got like over 1,500 minis at this point. Uh, the way it started was your question. Um, I fell in love with minis in the early 80s with Warhammer. Uh, when I first saw, I think it was dwarves. And it, to this day, my favorite race in D&D are dwarves. I just absolutely love them. I think they're uh, the perfect embodiment of the fantasy race. Anyway, and a buddy of mine introduced me to Warhammer, and he had, like, these um, these dwarves. And I was like, oh, my God, what is this? Uh, and I grew up in a very religious household. And so I was like, I had never seen anything. I was like, what is this? Like, this is a dwarf runesmith. I'm like, what's a runesmith? What's a rune, dude? <laughs> He's like, let me tell you all about dwarves and uh, this and that. And after that, I quickly fell into, like, you know, The Hobbit, Lord of the Rings, so on and so forth. But that first mini was, like, really ignited it. Um, we grew up... I don't want to say dirt poor, but we didn't have money growing up, and it was. Um, you spent it all on so, travel, that he uh, Jordan to France to U U.S. to Canada, <laughs> jet setters. <laughs> yeah, that's what it was. Uh, it, that's exactly what it was. We had eight yachts, uh, and I just I <laughs> just, traded one of my when yachts. You, when you went from France to North America, you just we all like, went in a convoy one. of your own yachts, that's it. That's it. and we got rid of one, and I traded them for one minute. <laughs> uh, one yacht per mini. I somehow am running out of yachts. Um, <laughs> and then when I finally had a little bit of money in, like, I don't know, the uh, you know, when I moved, actually, it's when I moved up here, uh, I went to the local stores. Like, I always wanted these. And so I spent like a hundred bucks on, like, whatever, three booster bricks or three booster packs because WizKids, you know, charges a mint yeah. for this stuff. Yeah. And I came home and my wife was like, What the hell did you buy? I'm like, just, just, You know check this out they make dnd &D minis He's like oh well we play dnd &D. we don't have minis i'm like i know and so i <laughs> i cracked them open and we opened them and i was like oh my god this is so cool and that was it that's all she wrote after this yeah. just like a budget yeah you know, budget <laughs> item uh and the monthly budget of like uh, rackham is gonna buy some minis um <laughs> so where do you so... where, where, where do you tend to go to to buy new minis you get them all from those oh. kids no 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 um hmm oh well, I know you're. Are you sponsored by Whiskids? No. Oh, of course. I could talk shit. Talk shit. Oh, let's go. Um, I told you I have opinions. I'm not scared of sharing them. Um, <laughs> I find Whiskids and, uh, to some extent, the process that Watsy uses around Magic the Gathering, mm. which is the loot box, essentially the original loot box, right? Um, I find those blind boosters and the sort of approach to be very. It's bullshit. Predatory is the only. Yeah. It's it's predatory. It's the only word I can think of because yeah. it is very much like sort of like a gambling thing, right? Yeah. And it's not regulated, and you know things are not equivalent. And 
while I early days, you know, spent a lot of money buying the minis, I go to like miniature market now and there are places in Canada like Meeple Mart and stuff that have good deals. I look for deals where I go on eBay or um, mm -hmm. the equivalent of, um, here it's called Kijiji, I forget what it's called. And in the States, there's like a, some kind of like trading forms, I forget what they're called. Um, like trade me, I guess, for you. Yeah. And that's where I go look, where I find other people that have. Uh, and recently, I've not been buying minis. I'll be honest with you, I have not bought any because the price point have skyrocketed so much. Um, and I find it to be really, I don't know, I guess I'd, it's, you know, a Tiamat mini for $400. Like, what are you, yeah. what are you talking about? Yeah, like, like uh, how can anybody justify that? Uh, the Terrasque mini for 350 bucks, whatever. I'm just like, okay, I'm kind of done, which is a shame. Uh, but I do get minis, you know, online or on deals when Miniature Market has a good deal. Uh, that's predominant. Or Reaper, which is great. I mm -hmm. get their minis yeah. and then paint them myself. And that's, that's so you do you do do mini painting as well? Like that's uh, something you get enjoyment from, I, or is it just something you do because you kind of have to? Uh, so this I painted. It's not a great job, but it's good enough for Remoraz. It does the job. Um, I paint I paint off stream because I'm not good at it, and also because I don't think my viewers would enjoy watching me struggle with, like, is this blue or is this turk? I don't know. Um, but, yeah, I enjoy painting. It's relaxing, and it's something I do with my kids. Um, oh, that's good. If I, if I find a mini that they painted, they did they did paint better than me. Uh, the nine and the six-year-old, I'm like, did you painted this? I'm like, no, you didn't. And my wife's like, they painted it. They finger, they finger painted it. <laughs> yeah, I, and it looks better than my stuff. Like my stuff looks like somebody vomited a bunch of paint. Like, what happened? Did you have a stroke? Like, this is the best I can do. <laughs> just dipped uh, it in the paint. I just listen. This is a blue uh, Genasi. So, <laughs> all right, get out of my face. Uh, but it's something we do as a family because I find it fun. Um, so if you if you some... paint them anyway and you find it fun, uh, do you have you considered a three D printer and just printing your minis, saving the money that way? It's a wonderful, good question, Rob. Um, I'm not at that point yet. I have thought long and hard about it. Hmm. Let that sit with the innuendo. Uh, <laughs> but uh, not yet. I don't think I know enough about the 3D printer market to get into it yet. Right. Uh, and, you know, pa while painting is fun, it's also incredibly time consuming. It is. Yeah. And yeah. I have know, to keep I have to keep getting my friend Spidey on uh, stream at my place to just uh, give myself the time to do it because if because uh, if I don't make it content it doesn't get done like if I if I don't stream it. it being done it doesn't get done like recently I've started doing world world building streams because I was like I need to do some more world building I haven't done I haven't worked on my world in ages and thought about things and I just don't have the time to do it and I can't I can't prioritize doing it if there's more content to be made or more more, more stuff to be done and so i, I was like i'll just you make and choose your I, battles. Yeah. reading was even reading was like i should read more like i'm a storyteller and reading is part of my professional mm -hmm. practice i need to get better at telling stories better at words i need to better use word good and uh, and so reading is a good way to do good that word, good so, reads, so i was yeah. like i don't have time to read but i'll start robert reads as a stream so that then i've incentivized myself to actually do some reading um, so yeah, I've got a whole bunch. I've got a whole like um, uh, de this this particular shelf here is uh, full of things that aren't aren't the, painted the shelf yet. Shelf that's like a, a meter and a half away from your. Is that a YouTube play button? What is that? Uh, oh, this one up here. Yeah, that's a YouTube play. I don't like to talk about that. It's just about I I I run a D and D channel called Viva the Dirty D and D that's got over a hundred thousand subscribers. So just say uh, we no got way. a YouTube play button. I, just, I don't like to. What? I'm pretty. I'm pretty humble. I'm probably one of the most humble people you ever meet. Um, nice. The top shelf is for broken minis. <laughs> All of those ones are shattered, uh, including mm. the most recent addition to that um, that, that shelf. Oh no! I was, I was playing. This is like uh... I was playing in person with some friends because uh, the friends over from Japan, um, and uh, I've been playing this particular campaign for for over six years, six and a half years, uh, and I've got these minis for them, Hero Forge minis, um, and and then halfway through the battle. And it, this is like a big reveal moment. This is something I have been building to for uh, for like six years. Uh, this 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 half orc lady is finally gone up into the mountains to confront her, her orc warlord um, about her origins and like who he is and who she is, and she's trying to like find mm. herself and stuff. And she, and this half orc character is like confronting her father. We break for lunch after like this big reveal moment, and then we go back and we're like, where is she? Where's Grid? Where's she gone? We're looking all over for her. Can't find her anywhere. The next morning, uh, Lizzie goes out to the garden to find that Harvey, my little adorable little bastard, has oh, no. has taken Grid into oh, like no. seventeen pieces, and she oh, is no. she is 
absolutely slaughtered. <laughs> like she's the just, biggest. She's just, a, she's just asleep, Rob. She's, she's just, just asleep. A, she's just asleep. This is the two biggest parts that we could find of her: uh, a torso with no arms, and uh, and 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 a lower half with no feet. Um, so she's, she's, she's resting, Rob. She's not dead. She's just resting. She's, she's closing just, her eyes for a little she, bit. It's funny, actually, because uh, Grid once, uh, a long time ago, was petrified by a cockatrice and turned to stone. So it's kind of like she was just turned to stone and shattered again. Harvey um, knew. Harvey's yeah, actually low-key the best DM. Actually, he doesn't know this, but amongst his doggy friends, they're like, Harvey, when's the next game? They're like, listen, guys, <laughs> scheduling issues right now. I gotta, I'm training tried, my owner to take I me tried, out, you know? I tried to, uh, I, I tried to... To get myself a mini, I've been trying to sequester the yeah. minis away, um, but he caught me, so I had to sh I had to tear it up and smash it and pretend like I didn't know. Yeah, I didn't know. Yeah, so grid's resting in pieces. Yeah, and uh, and I'll have to I'll have to just re repurchase that from uh, from Hero Forge. I do have a little table uh, table top three um, uh, D printer though, uh, resin mm. printer. I just don't have all of the other stuff that goes with it. When I when I backed it on uh, on Kickstarter, I didn't realize that. I needed like a bunch of supplemental stuff. Like you need, I keep forgetting what it's called. Acetone, acetate, some some yeah, kind of acetone. I think the thing that you dip in so you that need you to, remove the. Uh, you need to yeah. wash it after after it's printed. Yeah. So it prints it, and then you need to like scrape shit off and and wash it, and then cure it. And it's like UV. Just, it's just acid. Yeah, and then you take a drip, and then everything's great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you need to put it in. You good. need to put it in UV light after the fact as well. So yeah. you need to print on on the on sunny days, unless you've got a UV chamber as well, which is another thing that's just as big as the printer itself. And, and then you need to paint paint it. So I just haven't used the printer for anything. I used it for like the test print to make sure that it actually works, and it did. I was like, oh, cool, it worked. Uh, and then I learned about all this other stuff that I need to do, and I was like, ah, oh, maybe. And this I'll is why I don't that. have a 3D printer, Rob, because I don't, <laughs> you know, like you asked me, I don't have the yeah. the time energy to, to invest in this. You know. Yeah, if I had the time to 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 be a uh, painter as well. So top shelf is for broken stuff. Second shelf's down for stuff that needs painting, and then. Mm. And then all of the once it's painted, it goes into into the cabinets. So if all right, I've been running this thing on my channel where I do uh, it's D and D inspired uh, Jackbox Quiplash. If you know what that mm -hmm, is, mm -hmm. uh, it's been a lot of fun, and some of the prompts are fun. And I thought maybe I could ask you. So uh, this is this is my favorite part. Uh, me asking you questions. We, I'm sure Chad has actually probably asked a bunch of D&D questions that we've done. They have, they have, they have. They, they. That's the. That's why I said to put them in as as a redeem. If they ask them just in the chat, they'll get missed. If they ask them in a redeem, then at the end of the stream, I can pull them up and be like, "Here's all the questions the chat has asked during the stream." Perfect. Um. So, here's a uh, dungeons or dragons are out. Dra Watsy decides more dragons are not cool anymore after Game of Thrones <laughs> ruined everything, and they need to rebrand. They come to you, Rob, and say it's not Dungeons and Dragons anymore, Rob. It's Dungeons and. If it's if it's still gonna be Dungeons and, then it still has to be a D, because otherwise you ain't D and D is it. So uh, so we, so Dungeons and Demons, Dungeons and Devils, Dungeons. I, d I feel like they can't go Demons or Devils because the, they'll re spark the Satanic Panic and re mm. reaffirm for people that it's that's that's what it's about. Dungeons. My grandmother will come back to life just to tell me not to play it. That. <laughs> um, dungeons and Displacer Beasts. I mean, Displacer Beasts are my favorite, but then it'd be D and D B. D and D B. Is Displacer Beasts your favorite? Your favorite uh, creature? Possibly. Yeah, one of them. Huh. One of them. They're, 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 I've always had a thing for um, for uh, for big cats. I've always really enjoyed um, lions and tigers in the real world. Uh, the just like okay. powerful and We've majestic. We've got some good ones in chat. Dungeons and Denizens, Dungeons and Dreams, Dungeons and Desserts sounds Dun pretty. <laughs> Dungeons and sounds dodecahedrons. <laughs> Dungeons <laughs> and di Dungeons and Dice. Um, I feel like Dungeons and Dice might be the thing. Like, I, I also, if they came to me and said, like, if they came to me and said either one of those Dungeons or Dragons are out, it would be the Dungeons to go because Dragons are no, cool. They love Dungeons. And Dungeons, dungeons. don't dungeons. like people don't use Dungeons in Dungeons and Dragons. I've I don't, I, I've been in like three dungeons in my D and D career. <laughs> People just don't use them. Um, <coughs> so uh, I feel like drama and dramas and dice. Um, dramas and dice. Something That's like that. Good name. Dungeons um, okay, and dramatories. <laughs> just my, the entire. My, my, you have to use a camel in every game. Yeah, my uh, my chat. This isn't maybe not PG. So uh, earmuffs if you've got kids listening. But uh, the number one answer that came up was always Dungeons and Dildos. For whatever reason, <laughs> there's just some, like why? That doesn't even make sense. That makes no sense. Why? Okay, would that I mean, be? maybe you're not playing the same games as those people are. 
Maybe I'm not. Maybe I'm not. Maybe they mean the the city in Newfoundland. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what. Yeah. That's that's, that's exactly what they meant. What that's obviously what they meant. Uh, geography nerds. Uh, okay. Maybe, Josh, maybe they're just maybe they're just mis mispronouncing Bilbo because they're like, oh, it's Bilbo it's Baggins from the Hobbit and the Lord of the Rings because you know it's uh, that's f high fantasy. And that's that must that's be true. it. That's uh, true. So, follow up question. Tasha has put out her caustic brew. She's put out her laughter and a bunch of other things, and she's workshopping her next set of spells. So she comes to you, Rob. And she says, I need Tasha's next spell. Please help me. And it can't be Tasha's stinky drawers because that's already done. <coughs> so what is Tasha's next spell? And it's got to be a signature spell, Rob. It's got to be like bang on on the money. Okay. So it's got to it's got to be in vain with Tasha. Tasha's got her her um, caustic like acidic sort of shit. Yeah. And Tasha's got does not her, muck about. Tasha's yeah. got her um, her her laughter that can like cripples you with with laughing uh she's got her mind mind whip or something she's got and she mm -hmm. touches and she's got her so caustic she, brew as well so what's she what sort of things does she need on top of that it's got to be hag like um mm. it's going to be something to do with uh uh maybe something to do with i feel like mm. it's going to be in the veins of a polymorph of some kind like a mm. crippling like it's going to turn you into something that that is in pain while you while ever you're in that animal form or something like um uh hmm, what would it Tasha's, be it's not just uh, twisted uh, something yeah tasha's twisted uh tw twisted um what's the word f uh, form like a uh, there's a there's a word for s the form that something's taking that Tasha's twisted. I feel like it would have to be a T. Tasha's it has twisted. To be a t, like. What's the T uh, word want... that means that means the 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 form that you're in? Uh, or like a the the the. the... No, I'm, I'm thinking of a word, but that's not the word we want to say out loud. So Tasha's, uh, Tasha's twisted, terraforming. <laughs> She's nice. twisted terraforming. She she can turn a biome. It's a ninth level spell, but she can she can change. Uh, a mile around her into um uh she can twist it and convert it from one bi biome oh, to another transmutation yeah tasha's, twisted, tasha's transmutation. twisted transmutation could work yeah that sounds cool as hell actually I tasha's have... twisted okay. transmutation and she can uh she can turn you oh it's like tell you what it's like polymorph but she can choose uh she doesn't have Beans. to be she, yeah she doesn't have to be beast it, it, she can choose uh aberrations aberrations monstrosities um and oozes fiends, right? fiends uh, yeah. Undead doesn't make sense, and plants don't make sense. But yeah, aberrations, monstrosities, uh, oozes, and fiends, and she can transmute nice. you into one of those. I think. Perfect. Yeah, that's Tasha's a homebrew spell. That uh, absolutely. I'm. A, uh, it's a fifth level. It's on my channel. It's mine. It's mine. It's on my channel. No, TM. No, TM. No. TM. No. TM. I'm no, gonna no, open up my no, home brewery. He said that's TM. how it works. That's how it works. He called TM. I gotta post it to myself TM. quick. He said TM. That's how it works in real life too. Uh, I declare TM. Oh, he, he trademarked it. He trademarked it. That's how it works. Trademarking is really simple. It's just shouted out loud. You know? <laughs> a lot of people are just walking around Silicon Valley. TM, I got it. I got it. <laughs> I got an idea. I got a new idea. It's mine. Um, Rackham, shut up. You're on my channel. I've got to ask you more questions. Um, <laughs> for, for a start, how did you get into D and D? What was your, what was the first thing that got you into it? It was like the second question you wanted to ask me, and we've like skyrocketed past we're it. almost at the end <laughs> i know i know we're running out of time uh you got stuff to do uh, um how did i get started i was a young boy and uh a man came up with a candy in a van and said yo nerd i got stuff and he's like all right <laughs> i'm in D &D. and that was it uh you want some D and D? i'm like what is it? he's like dungeons and but not dragons uh <laughs> dungeons um, and dice <laughs> Uh, a friend of mine uh, was into Magic. The, no, this is before Magic came out. Magic kind of segued into it later. Uh, this is 1990. 1990? Uh, you were a year old, and I was like, you know what? I'm going to get ahead of this Rob guy that's coming in about 30 <laughs> years. Uh, I better get in quick. Like, that was my motivation. Um, this buddy of mine, David, uh, white dude, super nice, was like, hey, you, rack him. That's not what he called me, but let's pretend. He was like, hey, I need. You seem really nerdy. And I was like, I, I am. He's like, I'm into this group. We do uh, this thing, role playing. I was like, I don't know what that is. And he's like, it's got elves. I'm like, you've got my attention. It's got dwarves. You've got, yeah, okay, I'm coming. 
Were you so were you spring? into were you into elves and dwarves and high fantasy stuff already before the D and D stuff? I was into the Hobbit. I was into Warhammer. I was into heavy metal. Right. Uh, and you'd be surprised to know, maybe not, but at the time, like heavy metal, like Halloween, uh, Iron Maiden, use a lot of uh, fantasy imagery, right? Like right, Blind right. Guardian, those bands always like leaned into the fantastic and like power metal and all of that stuff. And diggy, it's, uh, diggy for some dwarf. reason, mm. yeah, Diggy Diggy Dwarf, exactly. And for me, I think the idea of like fantasy and escaping this drab world we live in to be in a place where everything is possible and anything is, is available. I don't know, it just tickled my fancy, right? Like, it's a great story. Mm -hmm. um, and so he invited me to come and play. And he was like, we need a cleric. I'm like, I don't know what that is. He's like, just, I was like, fine. Um, <laughs> and I used to play Final I wonder, Fantasy. So I wonder I how many people were, first character was a cleric because they had to be. <laughs> um, and so he, uh, yeah, probably a lot. And so I used to play Final Fantasy. So I had the concept of like a deep damage dealer or a tank. You know, this was not anything super new. Um, and I showed up and it was a group of four people, five people, I can't remember now. It was AD&D, so second edition, AD&D second edition. And we were playing in, um, I can't remember what setting, honestly, I think Dragonlance. And immediately, I fell in love with it, immediately. Mm. Um, and I jumped to both feet. And then over, you know, fairly quickly, I played with them for about eight months to a year. And then there were certain elements in that party that just kind of really, you know, I was young, but I was, I, I guess I was, I don't know, like the... Hmm. The power fantasies of teenage boys, of being able to achieve what it is they want to achieve that they can't do in life, often yeah. revert to things that are uh, not necessarily the most wholesome. Yeah. And uh, is the best way I can describe that uh, without being explicit. And I was like, this is not for me. I'm not. Yeah. Um, I, I don't want to partake in this. This is not fun. Yeah. Uh, random acts of violence and other are just no. Uh, and so I left. I started my own group. And there weren't, you know, just berserkers and orcs and undead hiding behind every stupid tree and rock. Um, I suck. I sucked at it. Like I was really bad at it, but I tried, and my players recognized that I tried. Mm -hmm. And after a few years, you know, I was like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm good enough to run a module, um, and I never really looked back. So you, you tend to stick to modules, don't you? What's, what's the choice there between modules uh, and homebrew? I no. So stream a lot of modules uh, because it's, it's easier. I find to. I don't have to. Um, there's, there's the buy-in already. Like people tend to know. It yeah that's it and people are excited about the latest release right so I did, yeah. i'm doing critical role call of the nether deep on fridays and people are coming in to to see what that's about and they right. want to know is it worth buying yeah uh, gotcha. i'm doing journeys of the radiant citadel next but at home no it's all it's all homebrew yeah. um yeah. and we're building the homebrew world on stream and people have asked i've been asking can we play in your homebrew world i'm like sure i'm happy to do it i just don't know that you'll turn up for it right like if if I stop dropping names of places that you have no idea about, like, you know what Faerun is, you know what Neverwinter is, you're going to get mm. excited about it. If I mm. tell you, you know, you're going to Arisha, you're like, what the hell is Arisha? I'm like, all right, well, now I have to explain. And new viewers, and you, you probably struggle with this, I'm sure, too, who stumbled in your channel, like, I know what Waterdeep is. I recognize that name. I can stick around and have an understanding of what's happening. Yeah. If I start describing a place they have no clue about, they're like, I don't know what's going on here. This is too involved. I'm too late in the show. And they'll bounce so that's why i tend to avoid necessarily homebrew on stream yeah chat ask me your questions uh i will ask, have i showed us the dragon behind you it was late to stream did i uh the sapphire dragon let me show you the sapphire dragon and rob has you know what rob has the sapphire dragon too i can see it i do on the it's uh me. it's somewhere um, yeah there it is <laughs> mine is very dusty because i've used it twice and then stopped there you go it's got stars and it looks a little bit it looks like a kid's toy <laughs> while my other minis look that's like actually toys. that is actually a good uh, question to ask someone who has a, a bunch of minis and has had a bunch of minis for a long time what do you do about mini cancer aka dust like what is how do you how do you deal with that how do you tackle i have the dust uh, problem let me tell you my my trick to take this for 5.99 join my only fans and it's just me <laughs> dusting minis i think that would be popular. like pipe it's cleaners popular. it's yeah. just sliding pipe cleaners slowly between the legs of his minis oh, that's yeah. it it's asmr and just me going mm -hmm, you like mm -hmm, that don't you mm -hmm, dragon mm -hmm. um <laughs> i i don't care i leave the dust and then when i come to play with them i'll pull it out i have a can of compressed air it's soft enough that I can use it, and then it's clean enough to, to right. see the table. And my players, you know what? Shockingly enough, chat, my immersion is breaked, breakened, 
because this giant has dust on the on the base and uh, my suspension of disbelief. How is dare you! How dare you, good sir, waste my time with your. It's problems. an air elemental! How would this air elemental gather dust? That doesn't make any sense, and I would like my money back, please. How often do you, uh, you play in person? Oh, uh, we're back to twice a week, um, which is really good. I same same gone... group? Two different groups? Two different groups. Two different I groups. was running four groups at one point, and I was like, okay, that's a bit too much. It's a lot of groups. Uh, and now I'm down to, to two uh, on Wednesday nights and on, well, tonight, in fact, in like 30 minutes. Um, so, uh, or, you... or later. What do you do for a living? I can't remember if I've asked you that. Or is you that didn't. too I... is that too doxy? That's okay. No, no, no. You're Private fine. information. I, I'll, I'll be I'll be general enough. I manage mm. a team of I'm in software development and I manage a team of highly competent people that don't need my help. <laughs> um, Handy. So I, I just play you know, uh, my job at, at work is very much what I do on stream, which is encourage people to do things. So oftentimes it's like, hey, what's the problem? What's blocking your work? Let me clear the way for Roll you. Roll a D twenty. Yeah. That's it. Roll a d20. When you fail, you're fired. You rolled a 1. I'm sorry. That's the rule. It's just the rule. If you'd have rolled a 20, you'd have got a promotion. So. You get that 20, you get my job. Here you go. <laughs> uh, and, yeah. I manage uh, clever QA, BA um, people that uh, that don't really rely on me other than to make sure that they're able to do work. Yeah. Fair enough. Sounds yeah. sounds like a good, uh, good simple job to, uh, to, to have for giving you time for doing all of your other things. If you the the um there was a quote about that I can't remember what it was but it was like the the smartest people are those that can get to, can get out of the way of the people who know what they're doing. Something like yeah. that. I'm an agile PM says fancy. Please don't put that word in my mouth. I never said agile. I never said PM. Mm -mm. If I hear the word agile one more time, I'm gonna I'm gonna vomit in my own mouth. That's what? a software development term. Fancy knows. Oh. Knows. Like she's I was like, like, are you waterfall? Are like you, you're are agile you prime minister? minister? What? Like, are you a scrum master? Are you like, at, uh, no, it's okay. Don't don't worry too much about it. It's, uh, <laughs> oh, oh, fancy just hurt me deep, dude. Rude, fancy. Don't hurt my guests. All right, um, everybody, shut up. I'm gonna open up requests and I'm gonna look at the questions people have been asking all stream, and we're gonna start answering them. Uh, seven days ago, James is drunk. Asked you. <laughs> Or maybe he asked me that. Um, all right. Uh, uh, two hours ago, GM Workshop uh, asked a random viewer, who has the better beard? And I'll take <laughs> I'll take my answer off the air. Also, do you have a Green Dragon Mini? Thanks. Um, oops, I've frozen myself by opening my requests queue. Oops, total totes uh -oh, profesh. Uh -oh. I am back. Uh -oh. okay. Totes froze myself by opening my requests queue. Mm -hmm. Look at this white in the beard. Look, imagine all this. All right, this viewers... Time for a poll. Poll. Who has the better beard? Easy clap. Rakam. Yeah. Rob. Oh, I like polls because you've always got to include the I like polls option. You, you gotta. Uh, yeah. All right. You got five minutes to decide. Allow additional votes, uh, but it takes you. Oh, they've removed allowing bits to vote. I don't know, did they? Yeah, they've removed allowing bits to vote. Why? Uh -oh. It's the only way that, <laughs> that I can earn extra bits. That's stupid. <laughs> it's the way I pay my rent, guys. Come on. <laughs> uh, to be fair, I don't really use that feature all that much because I think, I think it's weird um, to... I'm, vote. I'm not voting for myself. Votes. That would be petty. Imagine. <clears throat> I'm voting for myself because I'm petty. I voted for our like polls. Oh, you can use <laughs> channel points, though, dude. I've got like 30,000 channel points. <laughs> I'm not going to do it, but I want to. <laughs> <laughs> Got to bleed off those channel points somehow. All right. <clears throat> uh, so we're going to get our answer from that eventually when the poll's fin finished. Uh, Centauri asked, what's... Oh, fucking hell, Centauri. What's 157 times 5? Also, what's your favorite spell to use? Uh, 785. And what's your favorite spell to use as a DM? I like the spell Dream. What about you? Oh, Dream is wonderful. <clears throat> I use that um... a lot in the most recent game because one of the... So the the orcs the the orc warlord is also a a, a warlock um, of like the main bad guy of their whole campaign. He's one of the generals. They they were told by the um, uh, the quest giver at the start of the campaign, "Hey, I need you to kill four generals of this bad bad guy." And they they were set out like, "You're gonna kill this one. You're gonna kill that one. Eventually, you'll level up to enough to kill the main guy." And that's the 
overview of the entire campaign that's been going for six and a half years and they're only halfway through this is only the second of the four generals they've ever fucking in, uh, gone to and they're level 12 it's like stop going on side quests <laughs> doing yeah, do yeah, the main you thing have, you, don't have to, you don't have to 100% the game guys. <laughs> yeah and so they've finally gone off to this orc warlord or whatever and, and because he's a warlock he's got dream uh, and he's been he's been sort of uh, popping into his daughter's dreams and been like who are you? Come, come, be with me, Luke and Luke and uh, and, and and Darth Vader style. It, bet, between the two of us, we can take over the world. Um, and uh, and so he was. So I had already had in mind that they were like a day away from his his fortress, and so he was going to be casting Dream that night to see where she is and like to to talk to her and stuff. And then the uh, the warlock that's actually a member of the party said, "I'm gonna I'm gonna cast Dream on Grid," and I was like. I quickly had to pull up Dream and be like, how does Dream yeah. overlap with Dream? Have, if two people are casting Dream on the same person, how, is that, how does that work? That's going to be interesting. Um, I don't know how to rule that, but it's interesting. And, uh, and then he ended up not casting Dream on uh, on her, but he goes, I'm going to cast Dream on the, wall, uh, on the Warlord. And I was like, that's even weirder. How do you? What happens when you cast Dream on someone who's casting Dream on somebody? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's full inception. And and then and then I asked Grid like so are you uh, uh, so Mal's gonna stay up and cast Dream on on the Warlord to see where he is. Uh, what are the rest of you doing? And Grid says I'm gonna stay up and keep an eye on Mal while he's sleeping. So he she's not even going to sleep. So he's casting Dream and he's just waiting for her to go to sleep so he can message her. And then the and then the uh, the, the Warlock in the party casts Dream on the guys. So I just said you you it works it, it like he's in a trance state so he's technically sleeping so it works so you go to him but you just see him standing in a gray void he doesn't seem to be dreaming and then and then as soon as you and he goes oh, I, i'm going to turn it into a desert sandscape or whatever because he knows that he's sure. to do with shadow and stuff so we wanted nothing to hide behind so he turns it into a shadow with lo with the sun high in the sky there's no shadows no nowhere for him and i said the second that it starts to manipulate he seems to he seems to look around and see you and then he shifts his hand and the uh, and the and the 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 sun speeds up and it to, it, stay, it stays as a uh, a shadow scape but it becomes nice. nighttime now and there's shadows everywhere and then he goes uh, i'm going to grab this the horizon and pull it up so that it's it's it's, awesome. it's daylight and so he does that and then and then as he's pulling the skylight the warlord the warlord then like shifts his hand and the and this sand uh, this sand structure makes a shadow for him and suddenly they're having this like incredible like wizards duel sort of battle yeah, that's it. Yeah, uh, but they're all in a dreamscape, and so we're not. Strange. And so I just like ignored the um, the the need for the dice at all, that's and right. I just said, just describe what's happening. And then he's doing this, and he's doing that, and I create a tree, and then I create a giant, and I create, and and they're having this dream battle, and it was awesome, a really really fun Chad, thing. Take note of what the important thing that Rob said here, amongst the thousand things that he said that were all very important. No one to do. No one to get rid of dice rolls because if he had gotten dice rolls, it would have killed the momentum. It would have killed the scene. Instead, it's like this amazing back and forth improv between two players, and that is the best moment at the table. That sounds amazing. That sounds amazing. It was it was a lot of fun, and and it was like while they were fighting, they were learning about each other because the guy, the the warlock in the party, who'd cast it on this guy, this orc warlord, the the warlock said. Um, uh, right before he sort of made himself visible, because you can manipulate the dream in any way as the messenger of the dream, uh, you can make yourself look like whatever he wants. So he just made himself right. look like this shadowy kind of human humanoid and didn't reveal who he was. But then through the things that he was doing, and the, and uh, at one point he created two fire giants that they'd met earlier in the campaign, and the mm. orc the orc recognizes the fire giants for reasons because they're also connected to the main the main plot, and he goes, oh, so you've met Tubal. You've met Tubal and Cain, so therefore you must be part of my my daughter's uh, adventuring group. Okay, and then he carries on with the thing, and then like at oh, one nice. point he goes, uh, "Do you know so and so?" And he like creates a a, a, a beholdery looking kind of thing with like eye stocks and stuff, um, and he goes, "Is have you met this guy?" And from his reaction to that, he's like, "Okay, I think I know who you are now." And they're sort of using that nice, nice. wizard's battle as information gathering before eventually yeah. the warlord goes, "All right, I've had enough," and then he just turns the dream off. Nice. good cool stuff for sure. yeah it was it was a lot of fun so i do love this spell dream what's your favorite spell um i'm gonna cheat i'm gonna give you two answers one is a jokey answer uh i like to imagine that mage hand is like a ninth level spell that people have used so much in uh wizard dormitories at level one because you know teenage boys <laughs> uh that it's become a cantrip uh so mage hand is great and uh, I'm not, in every wizard in every wizard dormitory in every life team, there's a sign that says no mage hand after 8 p.m <laughs> For sure. Uh, 
Mage, mage Hand would also be great in real life because when you're driving down the road, I want to summon a Mage Hand and slap the snot out of people who are cutting me off or just terrible just, drivers. Just, I'll just, so, just, just flip them off right in their face. Just this yeah, Mage Hand appears yeah. in front of it, right in front of them as they're driving. That's it. Uh, that's it. so. Mage Hand is a fantastic spell. I love Mage Hand for that reason. My favorite spell is True Polymorph because of all. So oh, Modify yeah. Memory is a close second, but True oh, Polymorph yeah. Modify Memory is a good has one. so many applications. And I'll tell you a quick story uh, briefly. The reason I like it so much, uh, one, is because it allows me to make any object that you're interacting at any point of the game. I can make that a character that got changed into a chair, a coin, or whatever, and <laughs> yeah. off you go, and there's my plot device. I can I could literally do that any moment. Yeah. The mug that you're holding that you've been using that for could like, have been a person. You know, 100 sessions, that was a person. That was like Kevin the whole time. <laughs> oh, Kevin, what happened Kevin. to you? I'm a mug. Freaking Kevin, and beside it is Bob and Bobicus, right? Like, <laughs> but the reason I liked it so much, one of my players did something that taught me early, early in my uh, GMing career. Um, they needed to infiltrate, I had like an infiltration sort of heist um, uh, arc to a game. And they uh, true polymorphed one of the players into a gold coin, submitted that to the vault. The, it's like, imagine the Gringotts, but yeah, this yeah, was yeah. run by dwarves. They took it, they took the money, they brought it all the way down to the vault, and it never occurred to me to dispel magic, to check, they, hmm. because I didn't think about it at that time. They bring it to the vault, the true polymorph uh, drops, because they willingly drop it. Yeah. And at that point, they're able to uh, grab the thing that they needed out of that vault, uh, and they simply just <laughs> teleported out and it was done. And I was like, first of all, how dare you? you know, great. Uh, I, I never punish my player for out me. There's yeah. more of them at the table and they're always going to be cleverer than me. And so God bless them. I'm always like, you did it. You beat the big bad guy without rolling a single die. You, you're incredibly clever. You level up 10 times, you win the <laughs> Um But what that taught me is like all these amazing tools of like, of course, wizard banks would be careful and they would check mm -hmm. for money and things. Yeah. And what does that mean for infiltrating? So since then, I've developed a lot around that concept where, for example, I have an origamancer, which is an origami master wizard that oh, uses nice. paper nice. as like uh, constructs. And so often what he'll do, he'll send a simple envelope through the mail, the postman will deliver it, and then poof, unmorphs into a paper tiger that devours the, the creature, folds back out to paper, and you're like, what happened? This thing got cut to <laughs> a thousand pieces, and there's no traces of it left behind. So I use that concept a lot. So true polymorph. Is that reminds me. Good. That reminds me of a Jonathan Creek uh, episode. Do you, have you heard of Jonathan Creek? It was a it was a de detective series. Uh, one of these kind of. It was they. They were usually yeah. They were usually um, self uh, self contained uh, episodes about an hour long, uh, where there's a drama, some kind of a mystery happens, Poirot sort of sty style thing. Yeah. Um, and one of them was like some guy. It was a, it was a closed closed room mystery where some guy had like uh, seemingly. Um, I think he'd killed himself in a in a library or something, but the library was locked from the inside, and it was like, oh, what's going on? And the and the reveal at the end was like he'd uh, somebody had assassinated him, but by 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 sending him a um, a self addressed envelope for him to return, and there was like some kind of um, some kind of poison on the uh, on mm. the uh, on the envelope glue uh, that drove him crazy, and then he and then he hallucinated, and it was like a hallucinogen or something. So when he licked the envelope. Mm. Uh, he started seeing things and started fighting and killed himself. It was a good, it was a good episode, but yeah, it reminded me of that, like sending something through the mail. Assassinations by you don't even have to be in the room with them. Nice. Um, we should move on to other questions, uh, but yes, yeah. Trupolimov, very good question and uh, a very good answer. And for the for that reason, I have uh, a guild in my world uh, called the Arcanists Entente, um, who study magic and that, whatnot. That's, that's French. Do you parle français? Uh, je parle un petit peu de français. Uh, je te dis uh, l'école um, pour pour uh, pour cinq ans, uh, mais mais j'ai oublié tout. Okay, C'est bien. We do the rest of the interview in French. Go. <laughs> um, so he so the Arcanist Entente um, was uh, is a, is a guild for like studying magic and keeping it under wraps, uh, understanding when new spells are being created and like log logging them down and things. And then there's another another faction called the Artisanal Alliance, which is to do with like market research and unions, essentially. And part of their job is to make sure, like they've outlawed certain certain things that would destroy the economy, like true polymorphing into a golden mm -hmm. like. Take take a take a, a single pebble and and true polymorph it into an elephant, and then the next day true polymorph that elephant into a golden statue of itself, and then and then sell. Are you like, suggesting that, that sort of shit. Rob? 
wait, wait, wait. That the economy wait, could wait, be, wait bro a minute, could be minute, broken minute, by minute. magic. Are you suggesting that the economy <laughs> in a D&D &D universe makes absolutely no sense? Yeah, it's crazy, eh? Uh, so oh, to try and make it make sense, uh, I've invented a faction to, to, to be able to hand wave away like... Yeah, but why would the why would this not happen in the in a world where you can literally create gold from nothing? It's like yeah. well, because yeah. there's laws about it, and there's literally uh, there's like literally magic police that will hunt you down and stop you doing that. Yeah. Uh, so that's what I did in my world. Stop in stopping world, through polymorph. In the real world, we have min maxed stairs going up a fortress so that defenders have the advantage. You don't mm -hmm. think <laughs> that people that live in D&D would not min max literally everything? everything. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. Yep. <clears throat> Um, Future Armaniac, Future Armor Aniac, says, uh, if you fought to the death, what shady tactic would you implement on each other? Me and you fighting to the death. What would, what shady tactics? <clears throat> um, um, you're an old man. I'd, I'd, I'd kick you in the hip. Um, <laughs> oh, dude. Oh, wow. Wow. <laughs> this is, this is, We're going there straight away. I would instantly fold. I would instantly fold. <laughs> like, you, you win. I would fold over the... Even... Uh, <clears throat> get the in a closet. It would just be nothing but flakes left of me, and I would uh, I would plead upon your mercy, and I would <laughs> you pull out a picture of my young children and say something to the effect of, oh. laugh uh, at Look, look, I have children, and they are going to be Transylvania with their uh, <laughs> garlic sauce. How could you deny? They're the chosen How one to you? defeat Dracula. Dracula must die to my children. From the uh, prophecy. From the prophecy. That's, Jord that's, that's Jordanic. That's a Jordanic accent you were doing. Uh, but they don't do... See, uh, Jordanic. Exactly. Michael Jordanic. Uh, actually, in the Middle East, they don't say peas. They say bees. So it's not Pepsi. It's Bebsi. So the Bebsi. prophecy... Be the, uh, the, the prophecy. prophecy. It's, with, it's with a bro. That's why. It's <laughs> bro. Prophecy. The prophecy. It's just... <laughs> it's just... It's just, it's just all, the, all the prophecies are about going to... Going down the liquor store and getting to... Are going to sports <laughs> stadiums. <laughs> Every single prophecy That's from it. the Middle East. It's a war cry as they cut across the horizon. Crypto! <laughs> Elon Musk is a genius! <laughs> Elon Musk is a genius. People <laughs> running to defend him. Woo! Anyway, never but just. Um, what, what's, your, what's your shady tactic to implement on me, fighting to the death? Um. I would tell you that somebody stole your YouTube play button, and in a panic, you would turn around, and I would bash <laughs> you across the back of the head. Exactly. That's Smart. It. That would be my dirty tactic. Okay. Smart. Uh, um, Manda Mandy asks, when is Rob coming on for D&D Spire? Ooh. Uh, what is D&D well, well, Spire? Right now, That's a new let, one. Let me, let, me, let me throw you the pitch. Uh, it's basically, so I've been doing this thing called Boss Rush for a while, where uh, chat creates a level 4 character, and they try to find... A CR one, then a CR two, then a CR three, then a CR oh, four. Yeah. Cool, 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 cool. As far as yeah, I did, I, I did um, that once for when, when I needed some time off of the regular campaign. I was like, I ain't got time to prep prep today, but I still want to play. So I just had them like everybody was transported to hell, and Asmodeus was just d having fun with them, and he put them nice. in like a he put them through like I a series it. of things, and you every, every round you roll. You you spin the wheel to see whether you're fighting a single enemy, uh, two enemies, three or multiple, um, and right. then the CR was dependent on that, and then they slowly increased. Nice. And so what that evolved into is basically a mix of Dungeons and Dragons and Slay the Spire, where uh, chat has there are four archetypes: uh, a marshal, a half caster, a full caster, and a monk. Uh, and depending what character they choose, they start level one. Uh, it's DG, D and D adjacent, so you start with a set of hit points, armor class, and moves that are unique to that character, and they borrow a lot from D and D, obviously. And there are ten rooms to a dungeon. Uh, there are three floors, and so thirty rooms total. Uh, each room can have a monster, um, and then when you, whenever you beat whatever's in the room, you level up, so you can choose plus one AC, plus one damage, plus one to hit, plus you know, simplified. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, and at the end of every room, there are two doors. One that leads to something that I'll tell you specifically, like this is a trap room, this is a dungeon room, this is a treasure room or a random room, and we go through the dungeon. Often chat will always spin the random wheel and hope for something good, and it never is. <laughs> and so, One of the doors has a goat uh, behind it, right? And, and you, exactly open, it. you uh, open that all, one all and goats. always switch. Always switch. Um, and so I've invited Dreaded. Dreaded's coming next Thursday to be the first guest to try to see how far he can go on the leaderboard. Nice. Uh, so you're welcome to come and, and put your head in the, in the oh, gauntlet I'd, as well. Yeah, I'd be happy to come on and, uh, and and play after Dread so that I can so I've got something to strive to beat. I'm like as long as That's I get as long as I can beat Josh. 
I've got I've got Josh coming next Thursday. I have a Magic the Gathering streamer um, who's a, a good friend um, who's coming on to because he loves Slay the Spire and it speaks to like and he likes D and D so it sort of melds like that sort of card game element almost. Uh, so yeah, I've got a few guests lined up, and I would love to have you on the show. Yeah, man, I'd love to do it. Um, which which t- brings me back to something that I wanted to talk about like two hours ago, um, and <laughs> forgot because you won't shut up. Um, <laughs> you won't stop asking me questions. I know. I'm gonna put this out on your YouTube, I think, because <laughs> it's my sure. yeah. Um, no, I wanted to ask. Uh, I wanted to talk about anyway, um, or mention the fact that uh, one of the things I love that you do is uh, not only do you do your uh, Twitch tales esque. Um, what do you call it? You call it a play, uh, Twitch plays, right? Twitch plays. Yeah. Twitch plays. Twitch yeah. Plays. So so you do the the Twitch playing D and D. Um, along with you and rolling in the chat for what's going on, which is a, a, a very exciting and um, a, a very fun. You make it very um, a fun, engaging, interactive thing. But you also do uh, a series of D and D related games, so Jeppa D and D, for instance. And uh, and and what did you call the one where it was like a, a tableau that you ran for me? That was like I, I had to see uh, what was wrong with it wrong. round to round. That's, that's not, not raw. That's not raw. That was it. Yeah, that was a fun, really fun one. I had to see you. Had to, you, you described a scene happening in using Tailspire, um, and I had to tell you what was what was wrong about the the uh, rules as written. Uh, you can't do that because you can't you can't run thirty five and then also jump another five. Um, yeah, that was you, a lot of fun. You, so you, you do a lot of. You, you nailed it. Of course, I didn't like. Of course yeah, I did. Yeah, I've got a, I've yeah. got a bloody YouTube play button. Um, I thought I would get you on the succubus, uh, and you're like, no, the succubus is not technically a devil or whatever. Like, All right, fine. Yeah. Dude knows his game. <laughs> So yeah, uh, that's it. That's that's one of the major uh, selling points I think for GM Workshop as well is 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 the as a channel is the those really fun games that you play with uh, with people often with uh, guests and stuff as well. So yeah, I I would a hundred percent be willing to join you for any of those games anytime. Um, Hell yeah. So if you've got a new one with the ta- the, the what are you calling it? Ta- something Spire, uh, Tail Spire, D and D Spire. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Then I'm 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 there. And. And I've got the the developers from Tailspire coming at some point. We're oh, cool! To lock down a bit, and they're going to run through the gauntlet as well. So oh, excellent! The bouncy rock guys are coming, and uh, we're going to talk excellent. to them about Tailspire. We're going to talk to them about the D and D VTT that was announced and how they feel about it. And mm. after that, we're going to run them through the gauntlet. Cool. Oh, cool. Let yeah. me know when that is because I'd I'd love to tune in for that. Yeah, um, sure. For those who don't know, Tail Spire is. Uh, you might have seen it when, uh, if you've if you've watched my Twitch tales, um, often my battle map, the three D three D kind of t- uh, virtual tabletop that I use, um, is Tail Spire, and it's very good. And I don't know how to use it all that much, but Rackham definitely does. Uh, yeah, you, did some, a, you did a great job with it. Some incredible uh, maps and things there. Uh, back to the questions. Uh, that was Manda Mandy's question. Fancy asked. Now each of you grab your nearest giant mini. Ready? Three, two, one, go. Who won? Giant, nearest we have giant. The same one. Oh no, we don't. Nearest giant mini. Ha ha. Ha ha. I I got it. I got there first, so I won. This is my closest giant, and I don't. I mean, technically, technically, you could have meant like capital G giant, or you could have just meant like grab your biggest mini, which is what Rackham's gone for there. Oof. Rackham's gone with the grab the largest mini you have. <laughs> Ship. That is a very big ship. I love it. I, I do I love it. Wait, I gotta put it down. It's so heavy. I do love ship uh, minis. There. That is a very oh, good mini. Cool. That sh- that ship mini. Um. Uh. I I went with literal giant. Like grab the nearest giant. Capital G giant. Um. And oh. uh. And and so I went with this frost mini that Mike uh Mike Glasswell uh um. That's beautiful. Spidey NZ uh painted for me. Fantastic job oh, is, there. Is he single? Is he single? <laughs> he's he's pretty cold hearted. You. Uh, oh, but nice. Um, but yes, I do love a I do love a good ship mini. Uh, I've got just the one myself. Well, I've got tiny ships as well, like individual like dinghy boats. But I've only got the one yeah, ship. I, I've got a one, two, three. Four, I've got five ships. And what's Jeez, funny is when I backed ships. the Reaper, the Kickstarter Reaper, uh, ages ago, they made a mistake and sent me double. So I've got another oh, wow. big ass ship like this one that's sitting here. I've wanted to give it away. The problem is the price of shipping. Yeah, is <laughs> shipping. Hundreds of I can't I can't afford to ship it, but I want to give it. Away. Maybe 
if one day I hit uh, one million subscribers, easy done, right, chat? Easy. Uh, then I'll just I'll just uh, you ship it out. You, you can you can do it. You can do a giveaway shipping, but the stipulation in the um, in the uh, uh, what do they call it the terms and conditions of the of the sh is that you have to live in my city <laughs> pick up only and then i would drive it to your house. <laughs> i've legitimately felt because i want to give it away to somebody but i might just end up and it's been sitting in this box for like a year now uh, i might just drive it to a high school or a community center and be like do you guys play D D? could you use the ship and then just give it to them because that's i, that I don't be that's don't very it. charitable of you um yeah. Just just sell it on, on Craigslist, whatever. I don't need the extra hundred bucks. <laughs> uh, Mythical asks, uh, what's your favorite place in official settings and or your own homebrew setting? What's your favorite nice. place? Okay. So one place that I'm very fond of, I, mean, I have many places. Uh, I have barkeeps that I've, I, I have fond memories of. I have locations in the depths of the hells or so too many to count. But one of the places that I recently like um, and I've been working on is this place, a small... So I've created this homebrew race, if we're talking about homebrew, uh, these Yeti tykes that I call burlings. They're like little white Yetis that are small and uh, they roll, they turn themselves into little fur balls to roll <laughs> down hills and stuff. They're super cute. cute. Uh, they're viciously mean and they're awesome. And the way that the place that they live um, is bizarre in that spirits and gods manifest if enough of them believe in it. So All right, yeah. their village is populated by like family gods, meaning that like if enough of your family believes it, then you have a, a little deity that follows you. And when they marry Cute. to other families, that deity uh, marries the other deity and becomes a slightly <sighs> larger, larger deity. And so you have tribes that have histories of gods that sp like this deity has been in our family for you know 300 years or time immemorial or whatever. Uh, and I love that place because it's. It's whimsical, it's cute, it's got a lot of stuff going on, it's interesting with all the plot hooks that I've put in there, and mm -hmm. I really like it, and I don't get enough of a chance to showcase it, so that, that nice. would be the place that I like. That does sound fun. It reminds me of um, my friend in, in Japan, he's, he's been telling me about um, all sorts of interesting culture changes that he's been noticing, and like the family he was staying with for a while had like a little shrine to like a, their own like specific mm -hmm. family shrine, and like their own family deities and stuff. Yeah, that's uh, cool. Which is really, really interesting. What about you? Uh, yeah. My favorite place, I don't use modules so much, so my own homebrew setting, one of my favorite places would be uh, a, dwarven, a dwarven human city called uh, Stanhorn, uh, up in the mountains of uh, my, my, my um, home setting, essentially, island, uh, where all of my home games are set. Um, and it's a, it's a sort of a centralized uh, city in a lot of the different groups that are run have ties to it so uh, it's kind of well fleshed out and i've thought a lot about it it's it's undergone quite a few different uh issues obviously being the being the um uh the the, the setting for a dungeons and dragons campaign you get yeah, it's it's sure. <laughs> this same city has it undergone falls. like bloody fiend attacks demons attacks they've they've almost undergone like a volcanic eruption at one point some hags were doing something nasty up in the mountains nearby and there was an orc attack i i, I once laid out in my entire dining table like a good uh probably like a good six foot long table about three feet Jeez. wide and the entire thing was a map um like from nice. corner to corner of the table um and it was the it was like an entire cityscape uh, as, as the orcs invaded through the city and they had to fight back and uh so yeah Sh shanhan's probably gone through a lot of uh, a lot of iterations but there's another uh, another place that i really have a soft spot for in my world that um apis will be meeting in uh, tomorrow's episode for twitch tales so Ooh, make sure to like and subscribe guys <laughs> yeah, to like uh, and subscribe. no yeah I, the, the cool thing about a reach i mean ask the next question is that the these burlings live in hollowed out icebergs because it's in the northern reaches and so all their stuff is like they grow plants in there and it's just i don't know it's such a cool whimsical place i like it anyway yeah. anyway very cute. Uh, Mythical asks, what's your favorite mini? Mythical, you are. <laughs> you are my favorite mini. Mythical. If I could turn you into a mini, I would. There would be. I would go to bed with it. I would put it on my pillow, and I would wake up to it and probably uh, brush its teeth. Um, my favorite mini right now. Uh, it's been the same for a while. Uh, this is this minis. is possibly my favorite. Like I just nice. grabbed it coincidentally, but it has just got such an incredible amount of detail. It's from Epic um, Epic Encounters uh, minis. They've yeah. got like you can see the daggers, the, the knives, the swords that are stuck in its legs, and all of the different yeah. like scars and scratches. You can see it's like its yeah, the de you've got like the wolf pelts around its uh, ankles, like the different wolves that are, it's skinned to make some shin guards. You've got all the different like skulls on its belt and the deer that's hanging off of its belt at the back. 
They're uh, cool. Axes sticking, axe heads job, sticking out of it. Yeah, Mike's an incredible uh, artist. Fantastic. Um, it. And it's got all this like fake snow that's been added to it and stuff as well. Just incredible work with this icy axe. My favorite. I mean, I'm gonna. Can I cop out on this? Uh, it's the two minis that my kids painted. No. I, I like. What a I dad. Know, being, what a what a what a loser. Imagine <laughs> loving his kids. Oh, the worst. Uh, and they're great. They're two little minis. One of them is called Vlad. The other one's called. Uh, what's my daughter's name? So I don't want to say it out loud. Uh, <laughs> but my, I, I don't like. I never mention my kids by name. Just you don't know people are weird on the internet. Because you don't know them. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't know my kids. I don't know. They're just these two little midget-like people live in my house. <laughs> or little people, sorry. Uh, and they are eating my food and like drinking my. What are they? To get out of here. You don't even do anything. And, they, and then they uh, and then they grab some of my minis and just like started putting paint on them. And they did a better job than I ever could. Um, and so one of them's Vlad, and he's got like this red eyes and red hair, and he's completely evil. And my daughter painted her mini with blue hair, and she's like this evil paladin. And they both went evil, so I love my kids. <laughs> I love my kids because the alternative is scary. <laughs> yeah, when we were so for uh, we were sorting ourselves through the uh, Harry Potter houses. I was like, I'm obviously Hufflepuff because I'm the idiot. Um, <laughs> I, I love Hufflepuff. I'm a but, Hufflepuff. You know, they're not all there uh and my son was like i'm ravenclaw like instantly i'm ravenclaw my daughter no hesitation slytherin is the best like, all right dude this is what it's gonna be and she has the slytherin um uh dread like the the school thing that's yeah. the tie she has the badge she freaking loves slytherin this i mean can't blame her uh, slytherin slytherin's where the ambitious are at yeah that's it tell you what i don't understand about that there wasn't a, 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 a witch or wizard that went bad that wasn't in Slytherin, they say. But they say that at the time when they thought that uh, that Sirius Black betrayed uh, Jer yeah. James and Lily. So that he was a Gryffindor, and they know that they know full well that Sirius Black was a bad guy, or so they thought at the time. And then even after that, they're like, oh, Slytherins are the bad guys and stuff, and, the, and Peter Pettigrew, after they know that he was the bad guy. They, they, he was a Gryffindor as well. I took it to mean to say that every Slytherin was bad, as opposed to, like, only bad people were Slytherin, but I thought it, they meant to say, like, every Slytherin oh, there, was bad. There wasn't a witch or wizard that went bad that wasn't in Slytherin means that every witch or wizard that has gone bad was once a Slytherin. Yeah. Which, if, you'd, if, if it did mean that, you'd be like, maybe stop sorting them into houses where they're all together maybe don't put all the evil know. minds in one in one group where they Shut, spend all, the, all, all their the life together were, were, all the hitler youth were terrible because <laughs> we put them in there stop doing that maybe stop maybe stop doing that <laughs> maybe stop maybe putting stop them together yeah maybe their teacher was like throwing zig Hot. maybe not the greatest thing <laughs> maybe like, fired that guy like bring, maybe stop bring... maybe stop sorting kids by their personality traits at all yeah. since since bring they're since they're going and not even gone through bring, puberty yet bring child psychologist psychologists to help these kids what what are you doing what is this no we're gonna put a hat on them and let them decide the rest of their, future. <laughs> <laughs> their entire <laughs> lives um uh rebelin asks rambam have you shown the stream a, a close-up of the dragons behind you I did, yeah. I then got it, and he's seen the Sapphire Dragon now, or they've yeah. seen. I'm sorry, I'm not sure if they're, they're pronouns, but yes, I've shown it. Uh, yeah, we've 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 all seen the uh, the drag the the green dragon and the sapphire dragon, beautiful yeah. things. Uh, and the last question we had from Fancy was, oh no, from Cinderfingers on Fancy's behalf. Thank you, Fancy. Um, uh, on Cinderfingers' behalf, rather, was do does GM Workshop have a Jabberwock mini? Hmm. I ordered it. It has not arrived. I do not have well, a Jabberwock. Uh, do you have a Jabberwock? I do. I think you do. It came with the, white, the Beyond the Witch Light set. I do, and I'm not uh, getting it out because it's in that box. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so I would yeah. have to. I would have to move that ship, and then I'd have to Oops. move the box that's on top of that box, and then I'd have to get that box out, and I'd have to open the box, and I'd have to open the plastic so inside the box. I had on the Jabberwock for a while because I ran Wild Beyond the Witch Light as a streamed uh, adventure module. Nobody I know in real life was interested in it, so oh, I was really? like, I'll get it for completion's sake. It's a, in fact, I, while the module reading through it was a little bit disappointing at first because is that all you can come up with a Feywild? When I ran it, yeah. I, was like, I really, I kind of enjoyed it. I know it's a simplistic story. It's got hags and stuff, and I won't spoil it because you're running for the VLDL guys. Um, it's just just finished actually. They're, um, they're oh. all all done with everything that we're doing with Wild Beyond the Witchlight is done in my games. I know some people in the chat are still playing through it, so, yeah, so I, I won't uh, avoiding yeah, spoilers. I, I, I won't still spoil it. appreciated. Um, but uh, all in all, it was actually quite fun to run. 
Uh, I had to modify a few things here and there to make it fit better, I thought. But all in all, yeah, pleasurable adventure. I would run it again. Um, and maybe maybe I'll do that at some point. But uh, yeah, I, 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 I was I was super excited that they reached out to ask us to do it because um, I've always been a real big fan of the Feywild. And so I was excited for them for, for us to learn a little more about the Feywild. Um, mm. And then I I was like, oh, OK, this is just kind of the stuff that I would have expected. And like nothing really, nothing really exci- like blew me away. And I was like, this is fun and exciting, but it's not uh, innovative no. in, in that respect. So the highlight of that book I, to me was the carnival at the outset. I think. Yeah. All of that, yeah. The carnival that was, cool. was the, wonderful. It was great. Uh, so evocative. Uh, the mystery, you know, the mystery of a carnival is always nice in the yeah. game for sure. But then everything hither, thither, yawn, um, the Palace of Hearts, is all that I felt was like, oh, it, they just, there's so much more you could have done to be fantastical and extraordinary mm. and really tap into that sense of Lewis Carroll, right? Like, what are yeah. you doing? Yeah, 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 oh, yeah. And, and, yeah, and that, that's that's the thing, isn't it? Like, a lot of it was just like, this is this is just like kind of you're walking through a magical forest on the, like, how are you differentiating it from a magical forest on the material plane? to That's a it. Feywild forest. That's it. It felt, it felt kind of derivative, uh, if I can use... Uh, shallow and pedantic, to quote my Peter Griffin, uh, <laughs> or whoever it is that said that. But I just... I wish... I just... I really wish they had done more. And the same issue... I, we don't have time to get into it, but like Spelljammer... I, I saw a lot... You know what's interesting? I, I guess I'll... It's hard to have a nuanced conversation on the internet. You'd be surprised <laughs> how people either hate something and it's terrible in its entirety, or they love something and it's blemish-free. Yeah. And yeah. it's half to have, it's hard to have that nuanced conversation. Well, it's not all bad and it's not all good. Yeah. Uh, and people don't care. Like if you don't post stuff on YouTube, they're like, I have discovered the secret to D and D. Follow my channel and you know do a coffee at him. I'm like, I, no, I don't want to do any of these things. <laughs> maybe it's part good. Maybe it's part bad. And nobody nobody cares about like sort of the or you know, the, the algorithm doesn't care about. The, yeah, the algorithm is the thing that doesn't really care about it. Yeah. Sorry. Um, uh, any other questions coming from chat? Uh, that was all of the questions we had. Um, I just wanted to point out a couple more uh, minis that I have that you don't. Um, oh, look at that, Eric Okra. I know that you don't have this one, because this but one was a, this one was handmade for me. Yeah. Oh, ha- handmade, not even printed. Um, what is the worst race in D and D? The worst race, the worst playable race. Yeah. Um, what is the worst race there in D and D? There are two acceptable answers in this. Question. So what I'm going to do here, uh, Rakam, is I'm going to in the editing, I'm going to take you saying what is the worst race and i'm going to cut off in dnd and then i'm going to put put in the stuff where you were talking about jordanians um Perfect. and, and <laughs> right do it um, what is the worst race shout out to jordan and, and, and the and mohammed that's in jordan uh he's gonna send me an email uh, and he's gonna say i'm typing to you right now habibi from the back of my camera i'm very disappointed in what you have to say I'm like listen i'm sorry that i said those things I can make those jokes because I'm from there. <laughs> yeah, you're allowed. I can say what I like about British people. Exactly. Um, hey, here's another one that you don't, you won't have uh, because it is. Oh. It is blurry? me. Oh yeah, I don't have a blurry mini. You don't have a blurry mini. This is me. A nice. hero me with the D20 and some books and. Uh, but Rob, pretty cool, I had to say, but the mini's a little bit more handsome. <sighs> Just a trude, trude, trude. Um. What was what did you say? You said some. Oh, you say what's the worst race to play in D and D? Is it like to play or like the one that they've come out with? What's the worst like, race? Just a, no, not mechanically. What's the um, that you go? What, what I, race I, do you hate in the game? I I I'm just not a fan of all of the animal folk, to be honest. Like I don't like the Owlin and the Harangon and the like. Everything's just coming out with like newer and and more specific uh, animal creatures, Arlen's? really. Adlings, I kind of like the idea of. I don't like them being animal, animal-headed, to be honest. Um, but I like the fact that you've got a tiefling opposite now. Um, that yeah. was kind of like the Asimar was almost that, but not quite. Never really fit the proper bill. Uh, and the fact that they've gone, tieflings can be from you know lawful neutral evil, and Adlings can be lawful neutral evil. I think that's uh, you, brilliant. I like, I like balance. You're... The first book where tieflings show up. I have it right beside me. This is the yeah, first, so uh, do. version of the tieflings. Um, um, the race. Uh, oh, the Lakanth. The Lakath has to be the worst race. It's just a fish. Nah. It's literally a fish. I'm, it's I'm gonna it's just you. a fish. They're too, they're, they're, I'm going to tell you. You're wrong. I'm going to tell you why. I'm, I'm at, elves are by and far the worst single race that exists in the fantasy world. I hate elves. I hate them. How are you going to live forever and do nothing with it? How are you so... 
useless that you live forever and basically <laughs> elves in my mind are the forever procrastinators i could do it tomorrow yeah tomorrow never comes because you're immortal you are the most useless piece of junk but that makes sense but like it's con it's internally consistent tieflings First edition, that's a that's uh, a sexy tiefling yeah that's second edition um book yeah i hate elves because uh also, how does not every single dwarven smith or human smith despair at knowing that 8,000 years ago, elves made the best blade that there ever is and yeah. <laughs> done nothing with? Like, yeah, I don't, yeah I don't that's, that, that's, that's, that's something that you gotta, you got to kind of come up with world-building stuff for you, like, huh. And the second the second worst race, of course, is the Kenku. All right, I don't think the so. I don't need to explain that. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> the, the only race in the PHP that has a warning that says, if you play this, stop annoying the other players because it's so annoying. It's the only race that comes with a warning for playing. Yeah. Being like, yeah. hey, <laughs> most people will hate you playing this. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, anyway, yeah. Sorry, I'll start um, questions. I'll we, shut up, I'll shut up. We, we, will ha we have to end now because unfortunately we're way over time and I've got a, a yeah. game to get to today. Uh, and you do as well because you mentioned you had something tonight as well. So uh, we... we I mean, actually, jeez. Uh, we went over and it was tremendous. Uh, I, I would would be able to chat for seven hours more, I'm sure. Uh, if you are here from my community and uh, I highly, highly endorse uh, Rakam and his work, uh, you definitely should go check out GM Workshop. You can you can play D and D with him, and he's a fantastic dungeon master. Really uh, innovative and creative, and very good, very good with storytelling. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna just 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 close your face down so that they can't see you disagreeing with me uh very very creative very uh, very great with his descriptive um environment building and uh, also very good at keeping you um able to do creative things without punishing you with dice rolls and things fantastic work uh, also with all of the other things that we talked about with your with your jeopa D, &D <laughs> that that you run and the the, uh, the that's not raw the little games that you play here and there wonderful stuff and then so such a generous person with giveaways all of the time doing giveaways with with minis and things as well so highly highly endorse uh, uh, Rakam and GM workshop um, so so head over there if you have not already and drop him a follow and a like and subscribe and all of those things. You know how to do uh, it. Wait, my turn. If you guys don't know, if you're here from my community, this is Robert Harley GM. You can find him on Viva La Dirt League D&D. &D. Uh, also in Viva La Diet League, apparently. Um, but unnamed and un... un uh, but you cannot find me in the D&D &D annual 2022 um, month. Uh, thank you, Rob, for having me, really. It's been a lot of fun. I'm sure we could keep talking ad nauseum. We absolutely could, me. yeah. Um... If you guys are keen, you can come and check us out. We release stuff on Patreon, patreon.com slash gmworkshop. Check it um, out. Five bucks a month to get some stuff. I recently released a revision of Giants, Rob. You'll be happy to know. I've been working on it for a bit. Uh, so I got rid of the basic Giants and rewrote them all. Uh, and it's a free release. You guys can go check it out. Grab it for yourself right now. Um, right it. now. I appreciate the invitation. And I look forward to having you on D&D Spire. I look forward to it as well. Is there anyone online that you would like to raid? I always like to give my... my uh my my guests the option so let me take a look let me t i wasn't uh, i had your stream open is darling creep show streaming she's not she's wonderful um uh, big fan of darling she's not on who's on we've got uh joe fudge i don't know if you know joe british i guy, do not know joe british streamer uh he's do he's a wonderful content creator um who's a smaller streamer that's online that we can help support i don't see anybody that i know so joe is on if you feel like running that way guys um i'll tell you a little bit about joe he's a british guy does a lot of rp stuff um he is currently running mistletoe which i think is his greek uh, and roman inspired sort of um setting uh and it's a lot of fun so maybe we can go there or we can go literally if one of your buddies ben or, or anybody joe else is streaming, fudge no joe fudge is good we'll uh, we'll read joe fudge thanks for joining us all everybody and uh, i will see you guys tomorrow for twitch tales episode 69 nice nice <laughs> that's the sex number <laughs> nah, nah, 420 785 <laughs> bye oh damn it's over already oh well youtube seems to think that you'd like this video next so give that one a watch please